So here goes the record. Here goes the encoder. And we are good to go. We are live. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is the IT in the D show. We made it all the way up to episode 356. Wait, wait, wait. Brought- so that's Bob's wrong plus 340, right? Oh, you you, you got to wait now until it's easy math. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Yes, I've been wrong for 340 episodes. <laughs> we are broadcasting live from our quarantined homes. This is Bob the Sales Guy. That is Dave the Geek. Randy, I do the Twitters, is doing the Twitters. Find us online at itinthed.com because we are IT in the D. And, and you, and you um, uh, all these many years later, still, still are not, and we love you. But hey, America is ready to get back to work. But to win the new economy, you need every advantage to succeed. Smart companies run on NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. With NetSuite, you'll have visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need all in one place. Whether you're doing a million or a hundred millions in sales, NetSuite lets you manage every penny with precision. You'll have the agility to compete with anyone, work from anywhere, and run your whole company right from your phone. Join over 20,000 companies who trust NetSuite to make it happen. NetSuite surveyed hundreds of business leaders and assembled a really cool playbook of all the top strategies they're using as America reopens for business. To receive that free guide, seven action businesses need to take right now and schedule your free product tour, hit us up at netsuite.com slash IT in the D to get your free guide and schedule your free product tour right now. Go to netsuite.com slash IT in the D. Awesome. Good, but good, hey, good. Uh, we are. I feel extreme. like I, I really, I, I'm so mad. I, I promised myself the next time we had Fred on, I would have ominous music queued up for the background, and, and I failed. Like Stranger <laughs> Things or something? <laughs> That's what Stranger Things. <laughs> but hey, uh, if you don't know who that face is on the bottom left, or if you're listening to the podcast after, we are joined by the illustrious one. Um, one of our the best guests we've ever had, and he's been gracious enough to uh, be on the show for a third time, Mr. Fred Brown. Sir, how are you? And uh, you did not need to wear a tie on our behalf. I, 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 got, I got a little bit more formal today. Just to make sure that uh, I, I, would, uh, I, I, was, I was meeting the appropriate standards. So I appreciate being here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> you know what? We thought that everything was kind of making sense, right? You made, you brought the world to our fingertips. You started to make sense and give us stats. And it seems like since you left us, the planet has completely unraveled and everybody's <laughs> lost their minds. What's going on? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the the COVID virus really is a tough one. It, it turns out uh, we're we're finding out. The good news is we're finding out more about it. The bad news is that we're not managing it very well, especially in the Americas. So if you look at the COVID outbreaks, it's you, all you don't North say. America. <laughs> <laughs> it's all North and South America. Sixty percent of us is, is between kind of uh, U.S. and Brazil, and uh, yeah, we we made we made some some tactical errors. We. <laughs> And it, it, it's, just, it's just completely unforgiving. You know, this is about nature. So if you, you know, if you make a mistake with nature, it's just, it's just merciless. And that's where, that's where we're, at, we're at right now. Uh, so I, I, I ran some numbers just so you're, if you're interested. Oh, for and sure. It, and, and um, yeah, you know, I. I uh, well, I, honestly, I, I feel like we're seeing the, basically the effect of the numbers that you showed us the last, or the first time you were on, where, this is not a one like even okay you hear about you know the uh the rt value and it's okay it's just over one that doesn't mean that for every like one person infects one person we're seeing that skyrocketing exponential growth rate right now which is super concerning yeah it is if, if, if you know the, the epidemiologists have run numbers i've run some numbers everyone's kind of coming in at about two hundred thousand through uh september one that's a lot of people in the United States to die right now. About one, oh, that's one, so that's a death count. But oof. Yeah, death count. And by by end of next year, by end of twenty twenty one, we'll be. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, I want to make sure I understand. Okay, so two hundred by September. Yeah, September one. We we're could at, be around two hundred thousand. We're only at one hundred and thirty thousand now. One thirty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. If we're lucky, it'll spike in a couple, of, two to three weeks. Uh, but if we're not lucky and it keeps going, uh, then it'll be definitely over 200,000. Uh, if, if it spikes, like you think, the, you know, at around at, at about three weeks in terms of new cases, then we have to wait four to five weeks for the death rates and uh, and, and the decline. And so September 1, uh, likely, you know, certain kind of Labor Day time frame, it'll be about 200,000. And, and unfortunately, if you run the numbers, you know, for what we're expecting by the end of next year, by the end of 2021, 
uh, even if we have a partially available vaccine and even if we do some smart things, uh, we'll probably be close to a million people dying in that. So, and, and I guess that, that actually feeds into a, like one of the questions. Dave, did you just hear what he said? Yes, I, yes, I did. A million? Yeah. All right, yeah. just making sure because that was... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to drink more right now. That, uh, that, no, but like, so like that, that's one of the things that, because, and this dovetails with what we were just talking about, which is why I want to talk about that is I'm seeing a lot of, I don't know if they're bad math or uninformed arguments that are saying, okay, all the, we're seeing all this skyrocketing in cases, but everybody says the death rate is declining, so it's no big deal, right? So, and I've, I, I've, <laughs> Fred, I've done my part. I've, I've tried, <laughs> but, but I am only me. So tell people, why is that the case? Like, why are we seeing, you know, 15,000 a day in, you know, Florida and Arizona, and everybody else, but we're not seeing that one-to-one -one ratio yet? Yeah, well, it turns out uh, the, the, the death rate overall compared to what we're seeing out there is declining uh, slightly. And that's because uh, it's, it's a younger population. Uh, we're getting a little bit better at treating this, uh, in, in, uh, and uh, and uh, we are testing a, a, a little bit, a little bit more. And so the death rate, comparatively, um, uh, is is <laughs> it's about we we think that we're we're still not sure what the exact death rate is. Uh, we think it's around between 0 0.7 and 1.25. To give you a sense of that, flu is at 0 0.01. So if, unless you get to 0.1%, you're talking about something that's 10 times more deadly than the flu. The reason that we're not sure is because uh, the, there's, a, there's a mutation that's occurred. So if you look at Chicago, Northwestern just reported there are actually three different strains in Chicago right now. And one of the strains is about four and a half times more, uh, more infective than the other two. Uh, and so what we're, and, and unfortunately it also goes into the nose a lot more. Uh, the original Chinese virus is uh, sort of split between the lung and the nose pretty equally. This one's much more focused on the nose and unfortunately the nasal stem, the olfactory stem, uh, it, it allows that, that particular virus to get into the brain more effectively. So we're seeing a lot more central nervous system results uh, as, as this new virus, which is much more transmittable, uh, new strain, we call it a clade, this is a clade three uh, in this case, has moved into the population and actually is more prevalent than the original strains were. So we're having some challenges just kind of understanding some of the basics about the epidemiology of the, uh, 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 of the virus. And it could be- Hey, Fred. Is, yeah. What was uh, the, some of the new information coming out that all the autopsies that are getting returned are uh, an abnormal amount of blood clotting. Is that a newer strain or what's, uh, what's the story with that? So, and that actually dovetails into the question that I was gonna ask, which, uh, you know, basically comes down to you know, so we're only like only we're only a few months into this, relatively speaking. Well, you know, so I mean, I think that's the hard part is what don't we know yet? And like, you know, like when it comes to long term effects, and and what are we still learning? So believe it or not, when you look at the uh, number of resolved cases versus the number of people who are still sick, uh, there are about fifty three percent of our population that still is reporting being sick. They're unresolved cases, so they're they're out of the hospital, but they're still having symptoms that are similar to what they've had in the past that got them into the hospital in the first place. And a lot of uh, patients are coming back, you know, a month, two months afterwards, and, and showing viral load in, increases again. So it sort of comes down, viral load comes down, and little the little peaks two to three months out, and we're not sure if that's a reinfection, which some doctors are saying, or which means that, and unfortunately, in the reinfections, what they're seeing, if they, if they are true, that the immune system, uh, you know develops antibodies, you have some antibodies for about three months, apparently, if you've got a fairly asymptomatic case, and then those the antibodies disappear. So people are saying, hey, I got some antibodies, and they're going out and getting infected, and it turns out the second time you get this thing, it can be extremely dangerous, and, and even worse worse than, the first, than, than, than your first bout of it. And that's happened so, three or four times right now anecdotally, so we're looking at that pretty carefully. Isn't that true with like like chicken pox? Like like if you get like a mild case, it might not stick, and you might not have the immunity, and then you get like and then the second, and then if you get it again, it's oh my god, so much worse. That can happen with uh, uh, chicken pox moving to shingles at, at later yeah. ages. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, and dengue fever is another one where you get it once, it's not so bad. You know, you're out there thinking you have antibodies, you get it again, it just hits you like a ton of bricks. In the third, they need time. to re they need to rename both of those, by the way, because every time you see like I got shingles, it's kind of like, oh boy, hope everything's okay. You know, like, 
<laughs> awful <laughs> names like Lyme disease. They were like, oh boy, you know, what you drink too much, like too many Corona, like you know. Anyway, um, but no, yeah. uh, going back to the blood clotting, though, like is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the blood yeah, clotting. Yeah. So here, here's what happens. The, the truth is that our death rate hasn't really been going down. What's happened is that, that there, we've had slightly fewer hospitalizations. What happened when so what 80% of the people get this stuff and about 20% have, unfortunately have it bad enough they have to go to the hospital. That segment has not changed very much. Once you get into the hospital, about 30% of those people go on, to, uh, go on to the ICU and about 10 to 15% of those people die. Uh, so, you, you know, it's, it's kind of, so the, and that's about a 6.8% death rate if you're out of the hospital. And that's been very consistent in, in all across countries and so on. So that hasn't really changed. Uh, what has changed is the people, the people's susceptibility. So it turns out that there are two things that really drive whether you're going to die. The first one is, are you more susceptible because you've got pre-existing conditions, pre-existing conditions like hy hypertension, especially in the United States, if you're obese, if you smoke, if you... Uh, have asthma, uh, and of course diabetes, and, uh, and some other other factors. Those factors, and it turns out, sadly, if if, if, if you've got a lot of um, testosterone and your and a lot of androgens, chances are uh, you've got about a thirty percent ch greater chance of having a very bad case of COVID than than not. So balding men, people with prostate uh, conditions, the men in those, in those categories. But you're you're uh, just. Your You're just throwing punches at all of us right now, aren't you? Like that's <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I. So, so it turns out that and age are the two things that really define and about 41. So what about 41% of us is, is at real, is at real risk of having a bad case of this thing and, and dying about what that leaves, you know, a good 59% of us who can walk around and say, Hey, I'm in good shape. I, I'm, I don't have to worry too much. And that's why you see about half people wearing masks and half not if, if you go out in the public. So this is, so I got, this is a two parter. Um, <laughs> One of them, I oh, just oh, I, I didn't I didn't answer your question though. I should answer. Oh yeah, oh, blood clot. So what happens is that the virus gets in, and you start showing symptoms between two and fourteen days after. Once you start showing symptoms, about about five to eight days later, it gets into your lungs and start coughing and having headaches and and and, and so on. Right after and it, and then it moves from there to your blood. So about and that, that happens about six to eight percent of the time. If it gets into your blood then you're in big trouble. And that's what you, uh, th that, that is causing the clotting. And it's basically this, uh, this, this uh, and, 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 and it turns out also if you're, if you're type A or B, if you're type O, you have about a 30% less chance of getting, getting uh, the, 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 the disease just because of the genetics and the way it works. Uh, so this is it some, similar to like, is similar to like sepsis. It's like, it's okay if it's contained, it's, but if it gets in your blood, you're kind of screwed. Cause that's, that's what I had to deal with. Uh, back in November. Yeah, sepsis is, well, sepsis is, is actually worse, it's more deadly. About sure. half of people die of sepsis, but uh, yeah. So uh, once you get into the ICU environment, here it's only about 30%, so it's close. Uh, people who die of two things, one is too much fluid in the blood, they actually gurgle and, and, and can't get enough air into the, uh, into the, into the, in, into the lung. That, that's one cause of death. But the other cause of death that's even more traumatic is, uh, and causes permanent organ damage if you are to survive it is the spotting factor and that's why one of the reasons that people give anti-clotting factors and so on and, and take aspirin and so on once you get to the hospital you'll get you'll get those factors and so we, we are starting to you know, try to treat that early and fast the trick about treating covid and other viruses is to treat it early because once it start once it re replicates it replicates extremely rapidly and then it, it overwhelms the whole system it does two things the first thing it does is it 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 pools the body and, and sneaks its way in to the cell. Uh, so it, the, the body generally doesn't know how bad the infection is and does that with sugar coatings, which are, uh, and it goes into the, uh, the, the ACE2 inhibitor, which is very critical for normal cell function. I'm, I'm sorry, like sh sugar coatings? Like I'm like, I'm like seriously, like yeah. coronavirus is driving around with a panel van that says free candy on the side. That's amazing. Yeah, those, That's <laughs> those sugar coatings are, are in disguise. They don't actually reveal itself until, so the sugar coatings are very similar to the A and B type of blood, blood uh, 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 glycoproteins on your blood. And so it sort of fools, it, 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 it takes all these proteins and then coats those proteins with sugar and it kind of fools the body into thinking this isn't a very big attack and it's sort of, I'm, I'm sort of used to this anyway and it's part of my body, I'm, I'm not gonna really fight much. Once it gets into the cells, then the cell, the body's surprised and overreacts, especially among people who are over 60 and 70. And it, the, the, then, then you kind of have what they call a cytokine storm and that's exactly 
what Bob was talking about with the septic. When the cytokine storm occurs and the body just starts to completely attack itself and everything in it. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so it's a sort of so it's sort of a, a wild <laughs> etiology and, and extremely hard to hard to control because all this asymptomatic uh, transference we get. So and I don't I don't know if you've seen this yet, but it was it was actually real, I found it very interesting and it was it was a good watch. And it's only three episodes. Um, it's it's on Netflix and it's called um, I believe it's called Coronavirus Explained or Understanding Coronavirus, one of the two. Um, and you could tell that it was it was like, I think it got released like maybe a month ago. Um, and you could tell they were working with the best information they had at the time. But as far as like the origin of it and the, and the science behind it, like, like what you were just talking about with how it infects cells. I thought they did a really good job with that. So, I mean, for people that are out there that want to check that out and like, cause they really, they do cutesy little cartoons and show you like how this stuff actually flows and all that kind of stuff. But I guess the next question I want to get to, cause I know it's, it's, it's really upfront um, on a lot yeah. of people's minds right now uh, is so like, I know uh, today uh, Los Angeles just uh, shut their bars and restaurants down again and also announced that uh, their schools will not be reopening um, on schedule. So, and I know uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple teachers uh, on my friends list that asked the same question. Like, what is your take on schools reopening and, and, and them doing it safely? Like, I know we've seen a lot of kind of conflicting information coming from different sources at the top. Um, so I'm, I, from a just science guy perspective, like what, what is your take on this? So the reason you're seeing conflicting, conflicting data is because every school district is a little bit different. You know, if you go to the UP, they don't have quite the kind of density we do. They don't have the, they don't have the amount of virus in the environment. They don't have as much community spread as we do. Uh, and um, they, so, so, you know, that's a different kind of environment than say Kent County or, or, or Wayne or Batome or, or what, right. Washington. And so you, there is a little bit of difference between the, 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 the schools. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing is that um, there is a fairness issue that people are worried about in that about half the U.S. population actually can't afford uh, individual computers for each of their children and all the internet connections. And so they're worried that there's going to be a whole group of people who are really going to get behind Makes uh, sense. for a long period of time. So, so that's why you're seeing a lot, of, a lot of these issues. The last big issue is the, is the economy. And it turns out that 16% uh, officially of people say, if I don't have a daycare center, I can't work. Uh, and, and probably it's a lot higher than that if people have said, well, I can probably work, but I'm distracted half the time because you know, I've got kids who, I, who have needs and I've got to, you know, and I got to make that up after hours and, and it's going to be, it's a, it's a challenge for them just to, just to be productive. So we got those kind of three things and plus the socialization with children. It turns out that kids fall most behind in mathematics, most behind in mathematics. That, that's the biggest issue uh, in terms of keeping up and, and reading. Clearly, we do not need that to happen as a country anymore. Than we are <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you have a choice of what to teach the kids face to face, I choose kind of mathematics. <laughs> and, I, would, yeah, and, I would say the hard subjects for sure, yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe programming computers, because I, I could use that at home myself. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, th those are the things that you really want to, uh, if, you, if you have to have kids go to school in staggered and focus on one or two things for when, well, at early ages, those are the big ones that, that, that really matter. And then as you get older, of course, they start to be able to study themselves and learn things a lot, a lot on their own. But certainly, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grades, those, those are really critical years. You don't want people to fall too far behind. So that, there's a big push on the one side. And, and that's sort of overwhelming a lot of the true data, you know, because there's an economic set of data and a political reality. And then there's the data we've got. So right. Dale just came through with a, with, a, with a big study, and they actually modeled this pretty carefully. And basically, their, their conclusion was that unless you're testing college students about, uh, about uh, two time, uh, every two days, if you're testing for, for, for the coronavirus, you will have an outbreak that you can't control. Jeez. So that, that was their conclusion. Well, think about that, your average campus and burning through those tests every two. Wow. And I think that's true. The, 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 the biggest issue we've got with the young kids is, number one, we don't actually know very much about young kids. The reason we don't very know very much about young kids is because we sequestered them. They because the schools been, were shut down, yeah. <laughs> we shut everything down. So we, we don't, as, as a medical community, we know very, very little about transmission, about death rates, about complications about how long the thing lasts, about trans about asymptomatics, 
uh, about about activities that cause spread, all those things we really don't have any data on. Hey, so Fred. we're really rolling the dice here to some extent when I try to project. But that's the best guess from university students and progressing that down then to elementary kids. The biggest issue we've got is in mixed households where there are elderly people involved. So if you're wanting to go and visit your grandma, right. you know, or grandma's helping because mom and dad are working and you know, the, the grandma is helping out to, during the coronavirus issue times, there is a huge chance that a, a, a tragedy is going to occur. Well, and I think the, the two things that I've seen that like really kind of just nail the problem to a T is one is, you know, kids cough like this and, and you want them back in school. And then number two, if, if one kid on the bus has a project with glitter on it, how many kids on the bus have glitter on them? <laughs> yeah. you know, no. And you talk to these poor teachers and they say, you know, I'm going back to school. Our school buses are vectors. We don't have a double school bus. We, we may have to do a double duty, right? You no know, work. Uh, when I was in high school, we had, you know, sometimes we, when we didn't have enough money, we would have half the students come into the same high school and uh, second half of the day, uh, second half, second round of students would come to the high school and you can kind of divide that. But if you do the math, you know, it, I, I do, I'm, I am aware a little bit of some of the universities. There's one university I'm working with. They, their biggest lecture hall houses 475 people. Guess how many they can get into the lecture hall safely, socially distanced? I'm going to go 40. No, no, a little bit better, but you're close. It's I was going to go 10%, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 75 people. That's it. And that's a classroom that normally holds 475 people. Well, so, that, okay, well, then let's extrapolate that out. I mean, your typical, like I know the elementary school that's right up the street from me, their typical classroom size is 30. So that's down to seven? <laughs> 10, 10, 12, yeah, yeah. Now, luckily, the kids don't need quite as much space because they don't, ex you know, they don't expect to quite as far. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, but but, the, but the, 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 I, I feel badly for the teachers. Half, about a third of our teachers are over 50, and that really puts you in a, in a risky category. You know, so um, I think, I think what's, you know, it, it, as I said, you know, in areas like California, it would be very dangerous to open things up where you've got a lot of coronavirus in the air. In the air. We've got a fast increase in, in, in case rates, uh, lots of community spread, and you've got a, you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people living in close quarters uh, like here in Los Angeles. That, that, and they got 680,000 students going to that to Los yeah. Angeles school. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's a hard situation. That, and that's why I think they closed it down. Uh, I think in Michigan, I, th uh, I think um, it's going to be very hard uh, to open things up in densely populated areas, uh, and it certainly won't be normal schooling. And I think you're going to have to have a hybrid approach, by meaning you're going to have to do some things at home and some things in the school. And the problem with that is, is that it hurts our economy, right? If you're a, a mother or father at home trying to work with the kids, and you know they're home Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that doesn't really help you on your work. So yeah. that, that, that's a really, it's a really challenging, it's probably the most challenging thing we have. If you do the, if you do the math, uh, schools, we think, um, depending on the situation, can contribute between 2 and 4% of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a viral spread to up to 25% of the viral spread. Well, yeah, 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 I mean, elementary schools are petri dishes, let's be honest. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sick every two weeks, yeah. <laughs> well, if it's two to four because you've got, you know, you've got uh, social distancing and you don't have that many students going to each school uh, uh, and they're, they're not staying in school quite as long and they have, uh, they have testing that's regular, then you're talking about two to four percent. If you're talking about schools that have more than 500 students that, that where you're brushing against and, and changing classes and brushing against other students, uh, say a hundred times in a day. Yeah, everybody going to their lockers. Everybody going. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh, th then, then you're talking about probably fifty-five percent. Uh, you know, you, you could really get a spread that goes very, very rapidly. And they, they've done a lot of the math here. But I said twenty-five percent of the overall campus in the community could be done with two schools. If Fred, I got a, I got a quick question. Um, I'm like, you're, you're, you're my voice of, uh, voice of reason, the, the, you know, the reason of truth, whatever we want to call you. Um, memes are floating around all the time, and the topic of the last three weeks has been masks. It seems like everybody's yelling at the invisible boogeyman on social media, like to wear your mask. Well, who are you yelling at? Um, well, this one just came out today. And I'm just curious if this, how much of this is bullshit. Um, it, it says mask protection efficiency. And there's si six masks 
the two things that were alarming to me, like the surgical, the free mask that you get at like the dot, you know, they say that one's 80 or 90% good for virus, bacteria, dust, and pollen, right? The one that was interesting to me was the cloth mask, the one that they're selling like with like fashion tops, 0% effectiveness on the virus, uh, bacteria 50%, dust 50%. And then the sponge mask, which kind of is like the, the formed, like a neoprene almost, zeros across the board. Yeah. So, you know, and then the other ones are obviously good. Um, but I was just curious, which are the, the cloth mask and the sponge mask, because that's the one I see everyone wearing for the most part. Are the cloth masks surgery. in particular, yeah. Yeah, but that it says, uh, according to this meme, it says it's garbage, but I, you know, I'm kind of wanting to come to you to say like, all right, make some sense of that. Yeah, so uh, the physics is really simple. It's, it's, if you can hold, basically it's a physical barrier. So depending on how thick the physical barrier is, uh, for the cloth, the regular cloth. Well, mask. Uh, actually, hold on. So, Bob, like, I guess clarifying question, is that meme, is that percentage protecting you or protecting others? It says mask protection efficiency. Because I, I feel like that's one of the things we've talked about all along is, like, your mask is not about protecting you. It's, it's like, especially the cloth ones, it's about keeping stuff from getting out, right? Yeah, but it says mask protection efficiency. That's it. So I was, okay. I don't know if it's in or, you know, ingress or egress. I do not know. Just, yeah, it's looking at, it look, it's looking at egress. Uh, uh, generally, they, they, that, that's easier for them to experiment with. So usually, it looks at they have a little machine that puffs out stuff and they put stuff over the uh, over over a face and it uh, with various holes and, and, and different fabrics. And basically, uh, masks are quite effective. Now, the, but you need to have a couple of layers. If you only have one layer of, for example, of uh, of silk. Uh, then it, it's fairly ineffective. If you have four layers of silk, it is, it is very effective. So it's actually the physical barrier uh, on, the, on those kinds of masks you're describing. Yeah, so like this one that I run around with, like it's, yes. it's pretty thick. Like it's, there's at least a couple layers in there. Yeah, no, I can't, there's no light coming through that. Yeah, no, that, that's probably about 60% effective then. Yeah. Now, the, the difference between that... Shout, shout out to these guys. Do, do yes, that. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between that and a, a surgical mask or an N95 mask is the N95 mask actually eliminate 95% of particles that are less, uh, that are up to the, uh, three, that are three microns, uh, 0 0.3 microns or less in size. So that's, that's a fairly small particle and it can really be effective. The other thing that those 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 uh, artificial fabrics have is electrostatic charges, and those electrostatic charges actually uh, trap the particle viral particles in them. So if you're looking at an official surgical mask, as they don't say it's it's a surgical mask that has been manufactured under those kind of conditions in the United States, that means it has an electrostatic charge that actually blocks not just a physical barrier, but has a chemical and electrostatic barrier as well. Same thing's true with the N95 mask for certain kinds of fabrics. Yeah, yeah, this one says the N95's got a 90, is it 95% on the virus and then 100% on all the other bacteria, dust, and pollen. Um, oh, but yeah. others, go ahead, Randy. My other question with masks is that that effectiveness is just virus particles itself. And we've heard that COVID virus particles aren't transmitting just freeform. They're in water droplets, right? Great point. That's, great. That's a great point. So the surgical masks are actually designed to stop blood splatter. And so that'll, that'll prevent liquids from entering, entering as well. The cloth masks do not. <clears throat> the reason we're concerned about the, uh, about the particles uh, is that uh, we, we, we think there are three kinds of transmission. One is what they call fomites, where the particle gets on a surface. And generally, after about a day, for most surfaces, with the exception of aluminum, plastics, and so on, uh, the, the virus will die. It'll, it'll desiccate, uh, dry out. Uh, the, the other, the, so the next kind of, of transmission is droplets, people coughing at you and, and unfortunately droplets coming onto you and getting into your uh, mucous membranes, uh, both eyes and mouth and nose. The last kind is actually the most kind of insidious and that is, uh, we think that it's aerosol. So these are 0.4 micron sized droplets, uh, especially in dry weather, uh, there are more, more of them. Uh, and um, uh, they can stay in the air for up to three hours for the COVID virus. For, for tuberculosis, it can stay in the air for up to six hours. Uh, so that uh, gives you a sense of, you know, so if you get into an elevator after four or five people have got on it, 
uh, who've had COVID, there's no one on the elevator. You sit there and inhale and then, you know, go up a hundred floors. I was like, yeah, wasn't, didn't that just happen? They had like what, 72, tra- they had 72 cases tracked back to a woman who had been in an elevator by herself. That's right. And yet the Jeez. lingering effects. Yeah. What do you want to you attack the disease? You know, if you, if you think I'm, a, I'm pretty safe as long as I'm, a, I'm a socially distanced and suddenly that, that changes, all of a sudden the rules have to change and all your policies change and it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Wasn't well, that like the air conditioning stories that are going around right now? I mean, if you want to get people really pissed off, <laughs> closing <laughs> the bar is one thing, but telling them to turn off their AC is another. What's, uh, what's the story with that? So, well, say, well, and that's actually one of the questions that we've got is, yeah, yeah. you know, so what, what can, you know, as a, either a, a business owner or a homeowner or whatever, like what, what should we be looking at with our HVAC systems in order to like, you know, improve things or help as much as we can? Yeah. There, there, so you, you can look at retrofit op- options. A friend of mine, uh, uh, there's a scientist in this space looking at ultraviolet light. Uh, so, for example, some of the, the, the larger Ingersoll Rand, uh, actually, they don't, uh, who manufactures air conditioners, the, the large manufacturers of central air conditioners uh, have two, two, two different uh, uh, opportunities to you know, improve the HVAC system. The first is to do HEPA filter work. Now, that can, that can uh, wreak havoc because this is a balanced system. And if you suddenly block it even more than it was planned to be blocked, you can really destroy your whole compressor and everything else. So you have to make sure that the retrofit Will, will work, but you can retrofit a much more, uh, uh, start to clean out a lot more of the particles and try to get the circulation of the air uh, uh, through the system uh, much more often. You know, frequently you'll have a, a complete circulation of the air in your office once every couple hours. If you can get that down to 15, 20 minutes, now you got a lot of blowing going on, but then that, that, that really can make a difference. The second big thing is, is UVC light. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a frequency of light that uh, is particularly pot- deadly for the, for the coronavirus and uh, it, it can kill virus particles. The problem is that it, you have to get the light everywhere on it. Uh, you, can't, you can't have little shaded areas and things like that in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ductwork. Uh, so some, some, in some instances, it's pretty easy to retrofit and only takes a change of a filter and, and put in a UV light source. In other instances, it really requires a change of the whole system. Uh, and then you want to look at the amount of laminate, what they call laminar flow. Uh, and that's what we look at when we're working in P3, P4 labs is how much laminar flow you've got to push the virus around and, and make sure it's, it's, it's circulating and, and, and going through the system uh, effectively. But I, the, if you can keep your windows open or work outside, uh, it's a lot safer. Than being inside, especially for extended duration. So the thing that really drive this is, you know, how big is the crowd? Uh, how much virus is in the air? How much circulation do you have? And how long do you stay at, at, at a place? Virus in the air tends to be uh, people breathing hard and heavily. Uh, that, that causes the most virus in the air. Uh, so that if, you, if people are coughing or shouting, um, uh, then, then chances are there's gonna be quite a bit of virus in the air if they're close to each other, not able to socially distance, and you're there for more than 15 minutes, you've got a chance of catching them. Well, so that kind of feeds in to the, one of the other questions that came in is, you know, a lot of, over the years, a lot of uh, businesses have shifted to more of an open office concept, you know, oh. instead of people, you know, send everybody's in cube farms and that kind of stuff. Like, what, what do you do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the number one thing is don't sit across from each other. Whatever you do, you don't want to have people face to face breathing on each other back and forth, and that that happens a lot. Sadly, you know that that's probably one of the more efficient systems we had was to have you know call centers and so on, people yep. so facing each other. Uh, you know, it's sort of interesting to watch and keep people occupied. Their minds do, don't do that. You know, the first thing you want to do is break that apart so you're not facing each other and having you know people exchange a lot of a, a lot of air. Uh, second thing you want to do is look at the intake and air uh, uh, and the exhaling of the, of the of the air conditioning system. Make sure that you're not pulling up a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of aerosols. Third thing you want to do is, is try to make as much space as you can. Generally, you know your executives don't have to be around anymore. They should be working like we are right now, and that that usually provides you know, the company that I work with about 40% more space. Use that 40%. Let them sit in the CEO's office. Right? I mean, you know, spread that out for the workers now right. uh, who work there every day. The third thing is you want to make sure that you are hand washing probably 10 times a day uh, as a worker, uh, especially if you're exchanging things. Fourth thing is no canteen, no, no more cafeteria, no more workspaces, no more, no, no more 
you know, congregating and uh, for, for coffee breaks. Get them out the door in their cars, bring, bring food in for them. You know, uh, don't, 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 uh, don't open your cafeteria because uh, that, that's a big is a fifth, I mean, a fifth, you know, try to test everyone coming in, going out and stagger that so that they, the timing uh, means they don't have to all congregate all at once, try to get into the building together and right. then go to their workplaces together. Fifth thing is cohorts. Try to keep people in groups so they understand who they've been involved with. If one of those people come down with something, at least you haven't exposed the entire <laughs> the entire community to, to it. At least that it'll, it'll be controlled to that five, five or six people. Fourth thing is look at all your, uh, seventh thing is, I guess I'm on seven now, I'm losing count. Uh, look, at all, look at all your processes. Where, you, where those processes are able to be remote and not work with each other. You may mean you have to build, you have to buy an extra piece of equipment so people aren't carrying equipment, that kind of thing. Uh, try to make sure all those processes uh, are able to be con done remotely, singly. Uh, if, they have to, if you have to have teams of people working together on a process, then make sure you have PPE. Really make sure you have PPE. And finally, you want to wash down everything every hour. Uh, and then be deep cleaning every night. Well, that so question came from someone, easy. that question came from someone that um, the, basically they, they have, uh, it's like, I think we talked about this before. There's like 10 tables to a pod and it's basically five on one side, five on the other. And then it just rows and rows and rows and rows of people. But they put uh, hockey glass partitions between the desks, but I can still touch my neighbor per se. So is that, how much helpful is that versus just saying, hey, I'm, I'm trying to do my part? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think <laughs> I've checked the box on the form to comply with our liability requirements. Yeah. It's like changing your profile picture on Facebook. Like I'm helping. Um, <laughs> well, the first thing is at least they're crying, right? I mean, at least they're yeah. doing something. Uh, so at least, you know, uh, you know, the worst is if they, if they just said, well, we shut down for a little while, let's open the doors. Everything's fine. We can start over again. That, that, that's like, that's, that's really negligent because things have changed a lot. If, if at least people have tried to do something, um, then that, that's, that's a positive, right? It means your employee cares, you're trying to make sure you're, you're staying healthy. But the truth is that if you're not able to maintain a six foot distance um, uh, with people and you're sitting across from them and you're able to physically touch them and you're sharing environments like that, um, there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a good chance that if, if things go through, especially if people are talking a lot, um, you know. All uh, day. Oh. Yeah, that, that's that, if, if you're so the first thing you want to do is understand your own level of security, right? If you're a young 20 year old person who feels pretty confident, I might think about I might think about it. But if, if you're if you're our age, and you've got a compromising condition, never, never. In a million, I mean, it, it'll, it'll kill you. But what the, what this thing does is it hibernates in, you know, in people. You know, it goes around reproducing, having a great time, right? And it goes from place to place. I mean, place. don't we all? I mean, that's... Exactly, that's... <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a great life, right? It's a great life. It goes around, they're having sex and having, you know, not, not, but not exactly, but, you know, it's having a great time. We're, we're using our reproductive system and pushing things through the, our blood and everything else, having a wonderful time. And then it eventually finds somebody who's susceptible and who has a pre-existing condition and it kills them. So, and and so I, that, that's what's really sad about. Wasn't there an article that says if you have sex, wear a mask with someone? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, that, that came out of England. Um, was that out of England? Oh. It was, yeah. But so, and so I, I guess that actually feeds into one of the other questions that I got in, which is okay. So, knowing what we know at least right now, and I always put that caveat on it because, dude, this is science. Shit evolves. Shit changes. We're still learning. Um, what does quote unquote recovered from COVID-19 mean? What, what, like what, what does that mean right now? Yeah. So what it means is that you've gone through So if you catch the disease and you're diagnosed with it, what you have to have is, is two positive tests uh, after a 24 hour period in both your nasal and your lungs and what, uh, two negative tests, right? So this year positive, you go through the whole system, your body clears it, clears it, the virus stops the shedding. Uh, and usually, that usually takes, you know, 14 to 20 days. Uh, and at that point, you'll have tests redone and you'll do the nasal plate, you won't see anything. You'll do the, you'll do the uh, uh, lung piece, you won't see anything. You do that twice over a 24 hour period, everything all clear, then you're, you're quote unquote resolved. 
Um, I had one that come in, and I, I know exactly who this is and why she's asking it. Um, so it's uh, so. How do you feel about um, indoor sports right now? Uh, you know, things like volleyball. Um, you know, things that are you know the like a lot of the the school sports are still gearing up, um, even though we're still not sure what's going to happen with schools yet. Um, but I know, like I've seen kids out on baseball fields and they're all kind of like we talked about the MLB opening Bob and you know they're all wearing batting gloves they're all wearing masks in the dugout and all that stuff but like how do you like I think indoor is is a lot different and is probably your answer probably is going to make my skin curl (laughs) (laughs) indoor is about 18 times more dangerous than outdoor generally and the fact that outdoor professional sports who are currently living in bubbles are, are having outbreaks. We have 40, 40 baseball players who are, uh, at, who are, who had an outbreak. And, and, I'm, and I'm not going to lie. Like that's the part that really truly amazed me about seeing kids out on the baseball field. I'm like, dude, if the professional sports teams that are spending <laughs> millions of dollars on these people can't keep their shit safe, what are you doing? Like <laughs> the NHL went up to Canada to go, go ahead and reduce the viral load yep. environment. You know, uh, you know, trying trying to keep yourself safe in Orlando is really challenging right now. Uh, so- may, uh, soccer had an outbreak among twelve teams uh, uh, so far, uh, and the problem is that you know the vector is the ball. You know, so you know, strike some, strike a guy out. You throw it around the horn, everyone's touched the ball. What right. are you gonna do? You know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, same thing with volleyball. You know, people are sweat, are sweating. They're 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 working hard. They're uh, they're ex- they're they're exhaling significantly. Well, it's the, the same thing you were saying about gyms when when yeah. I when we asked you that last time. Yeah, and you're, and you're facing people, right? I mean, you're you're, you're up at the net. You're you're facing people. You got to get close. You got to you know, snap. You got you want you want to ground spikes. You want to hit spikes. Uh, you you have to get you have to get the sets right. All those things mean. It would be extremely difficult if even one person on your team or one person on the opposing team had the, had, had the virus. There's a great chance that you're going to have it after the game. Yeah, because like my, uh, my daughter's playing soccer. They've been practicing for a good month, but they won't, they won't allow them to scrimmage. So it's really just doing ball handling drills, running, yeah. um, kind of light you know, activity, but they're not letting them play. Yeah, that that that's that that's comparatively safe. You know that that that's that's good practice right now. Until we know more about viral transfer, uh, uh, and, and and we'll we'll, we'll learn fast. Uh, I hope in a good way that it's maybe not as dangerous as we think right now. Uh, but there's a it, there's a great chance that it is as dangerous. As we think. So how about how about the elephant in the room? Um, the governor comes out and issues an uh, an emergency what's the word emergency alert, saying you know everybody wear masks. And then here, here you have, you know, Oakland County sheriffs, like, kiss my ass. Macomb County sheriff, kiss my ass. Leelanau County, like, he's like, I ain't enforcing that. So, like. Actually, did you read, did you, I, f- I found their response interesting. They are not going to respond to individuals that right. are reporting. But if a business reports somebody being obstinate or not wearing a mask and refusing to comply, they will respond to that. Well, that's basic trespassing, right? If you, if you, yeah. if you ask them to yeah. leave. The problem is, you know, and I overheard somebody talking today um, saying like, hey, my daughter's 16. She's working at the grocery store. She's not going to front some 40-year-old house mom and say you, you can't come in. It's not her job, right? And it's, it's not her in her psyche. So it's like, you know, again, so now we're seeing the common citizen. Everybody, you know, they, they, they tell you sometimes like, take a picture of the person and submit it to the health department. It's like, are we getting to that point as a society? Um, it's like, what... What do you make? I mean, we're all trying to do our part. We really are. And there's a couple people that are assholes, but like, what are we supposed to do about all this? Yeah. You know, citizens arrest. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, certainly don't, don't get yourself in a scuffle. Just, just avoid the person. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't, you know, if you, if you, if you can front them, you know, who knows the guy may be a black belt Taekwondo expert and he's, Find yourself you know, out cold. You don't. You don't want to have that happen, and you hurt yourself. So just you know, I I, I think that um, eventually what's going to happen is that it'll be cultural. You know, people will say if you if you go to places in California right now um, and you don't have your mask on, you know it because and a friend of mine forgot. You know, he said, I no, I just ran out. You know, I, I'm from Michigan. I flew in, forgot, forgot my mask, in my car, and like within ten steps, he realized, uh oh. There's something wrong here. Oh, it's me. I don't have my mask on because everyone was scowling at him. Everyone else had masks on. 
and they were like, you know, time to get my mask out of my car. I'll go back and pick up my, pick up my mask out of the car. I think eventually that's going to happen. And what's going to, so the interesting question is how long is a mask, mask going to be required, right? And we asked, we, we, so what we did in the University of Michigan is they actually asked people, how long do you think it will be before you're feeling safe with COVID? And everywhere around the world, with the exception of four countries, we, we asked 20,000 people, everywhere, everywhere around the world, 90% of people thought it would be six months or less where we're all going to be safe in the COVID environment. All day. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah, right? Wrong. 90%. I was like, holy cow, I got to get out and talk more because <laughs> there's no way. Well, so that was actually one of the interesting things because I've been talking you know, like the whole uh, one of the things that they talk about and they actually do a really good job uh, in that Netflix show that I was talking about, uh, talking about all the different vaccines uh, that are that are going through trials or that are in, you know, in tr in production and all that kind of stuff that they're testing. Um, and like the like the one that shows the most promise, I guess, is coming out of Oxford. Um, yeah. because they're basing it off the SARS vaccine that they already almost had done, and this is a close relative. And then I guess there are two others that are trying to use like technology and production methods that have never been used or tested before, but say they can get done faster. But the weird thing is, is now, especially with like all, you know, everybody's been talking herd immunity, herd immunity, herd immunity. And so with this possibly like shortened window on antibody lifespans, like and they're talking. I, I believe, I, like you want to get to at least sixty to seventy percent of the population to have herd immunity in order to to start getting there. Okay, you you start doing that math. We have what seven point eight billion people in the world with a shortened immunity window, and there has never and that was one of the points they were making. There has never ever been a been an an antivirus or an, uh, a vaccine that's ever been produced in such mass quantities to basically try to saturate the entire earth 60 to 70 percent of the population at one time within about 30 days because that was that was their you know supposition was that in order to really do this right to get to herd immunity you're going to have to hit 60 to 70 percent of the global population within about a 30-day window which means so that you know 60 to 70 percent of 7.8 billion you need four to five billion doses of this stuff they'll and just put it in the water dave you know what they'll it'll do. be fluoride it'll be it'll put it in the chemtrails in the water <laughs> it's all about the contrails and the <laughs> right wow they'll swap out the the 5g tower modules and yes. to do vaccines so so the germans are always very direct right uh and i thought that the most concrete statement was by the ceo of the pfizer partner who's part of our Warp Speed pro program, uh, it's called BioNTech. And what the CEO said is, we will have a vaccine in December, right? And the Germans are pretty, I mean, they're- they are, and, and that's right? what the Oxford well, folks are saying too, schedule, yeah. Right? I mean, you, you, you know, they, 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 their trains are on time, yep. they, they, they have a schedule, they, they produce. So chances are, they're gonna have a vaccine in December. You know what he said in the same sentence? But we won't control this virus for at least 10 years. So if you talk to epidemiologists about mask wearing, 90% of them say it's going to be at least the next two years. Everyone's going to be wearing masks. Hey, Fred, just tell them we only have eight-year term limits and Trump will be out of the <laughs> office by then and it's okay. Uh, you know, I'm funny. Come on. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. He finally wore a mask. He broke down. It Good can, for can, him. This cannot be a political issue anymore. And it, and it was probably the neoprene one that doesn't block <laughs> shit. So he's going to catch hell either way. Actually, I, I sort of liked his mask. I sort of liked the presidential seal on the side. I thought, I thought, I thought it was sort of the happening thing. I, I, but I, but you know, he, came, he went to Walter Reed and he wore a mask, and you know, good for him. You know, that, you know those, those guys are you know compromised frequently. They oh, for sure. Have, uh, the, 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 so. You no, know, that, that that's good to see, and I you know, hey, they, they, they could be a great business in MAGA masks and and uh, uh, and faith and freedom. Oh yeah, oh, you you know they're, they're, they're loading up the website with them right now. Why would really you? About the part of your you'd, be, you'd be stupid open, not to. Just call them the open season line. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I, 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 I hope I see it. So on the vaccine side, yeah. what's important is people are starting to, to the experts. Uh, you know, I, I deal with. It. With virologists, I, I, I developed a lot of drugs. I, I deal with a lot of these companies. There are four big companies that are involved. Um, the rest of them are quite small uh, startups or they're national companies like in China and, and, and so on. But the, and they're, they're basically, you're, you're betting on five different fire, uh, vaccines. The first set of vaccines are the vaccines that we have bets on. That's warp, the warp speed vaccines. There are five of them in process. Uh, 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 
and, and one of them has four different branches of, of testing. So that's, you know, and what, what we've done in the United States is we've said, hey, um, we want to have a guaranteed $300 million. We want, we want guaranteed $300 million doses. You can do whatever you want with the rest of the doses, but we want ours first. You know, so good negotiation on, uh, on our part, right? We, we said we want ours first. It's a little bit selfish because we said, wait a minute, you know, you know, that means that people who may not even be eligible for the vaccine are going to get it in the United States or healthcare workers in Bangladesh get it. But, you know, right. people are talking about billions of doses. Um, so 300, 300 million. And we've, we've negotiated that with AstraZeneca, with Johnson & Johnson, with Sanofi, uh, and Moderna, right? So those are the big, big and then there's an, uh, Norovax, who's also a couple, so a few things. Now, then that, that, that's the U.S. plan. Uh, and UK did the same thing. The UK is betting on the AstraZeneca Oxford uh, program. Mm -hmm. It's now in phase two, three clinical trials. Um, and they uh, also said, we'll do this, but we want to have 100 million doses. So they, you know, the 400 million doses for that Oxford vaccine are already off to the side. That's, that's, that's a set. The UK only has one bet. That we have five. So, that, you know, at plus uh, four more beyond that. Then we've got China. China has a whole bunch of vets too, and they're actually a little bit ahead of us. They're actually in, they're already injecting their military with a vaccine. Um, and so they're, you know, they're, so they're figuring out exactly what the response is in humans already. Uh, and so they may be on, on the market a little bit ahead of us. I think it'll be tight, but it could be, they could be actually ahead of us. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with that kind of extra power, right? Um, and are we trusting, are we trusting what China says these days? I'm just being curious. I'm not being funny. No, uh, no, like no the, I hear you. With so, the reporting uh, numbers and all that stuff, it's like it's, God, you know. Yeah, so so we actually done a survey of that. <laughs> and it turns out that about 60% of, of people, of their neighbors do not trust what China is saying. So if you ask, you know, Taiwan, they sure as hell don't. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no they're, they're, they're quite worried about what China says, you know, but Thailand, Indonesia, those places, about 60% of people saying, eh, you know, I'm not, I, I question it. About half of Americans question what they say, and about only 40% of Europeans do. So it's sort of interesting that there's sort of that, but their closer neighbors don't trust them. Uh, I, I actually think that on a scientific basis, they're being pretty honest. They, they, were, they were slow because they sort of wanted to, Contain it politically, especially the, the province of Wuhan. But now, you know, when I deal with Chinese experts, uh, they're, 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 I think, you know, I'm, I'm getting the straight scoop on the science side of things. And they had some recent very important publications about what was happening in Monaco antibodies. So they, they've got some good people, a lot of them trained here, frankly. Um, and then, then the last bet, bet is the European bet. The Europeans have put aside $31 billion, or they've asked for $31 billion for whatever can happen in, 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 in Europe to be produced in vaccines. And what they've done, instead of uh, negotiating volume, they negotiated price. So they said, we're going to give this money to you, but the price has to be $2.50 per vaccine dose. So it's sort of, it, you know, there, there's sort of some interesting different negotiating strategies and so on going on. I think we probably will have partial vaccines in the next 18 months to 21 months. As I said before, I think that is likely. The problem is going to, as you said, the challenge is, um, so you mentioned what, what area of vaccine DNA and RNA vaccine. Yep. Those we have never successfully scaled. In fact, we don't have one example of a vaccine that's ever occurred. That's what they were saying. Say. The reason that the DNA RNA vaccine is interesting is because it requires a lot lower dose. Yep. So what, what, they, what happens is the DNA uh, vaccines and RNA vaccines, DNA actually actually have electrophoresis. They're actually fairly large molecules. They actually have to electrify the skin mm -hmm. in order to get the vaccine in. Uh, so it's a little bit more complicated. You can imagine trying to get that all you know, figured out uh, around the world. RNA vaccines, straight injection, they're usually two doses or you know, and there's booster shots required. But what happens is the RNA goes in and it does what it's supposed to do and it creates its own proteins. In the other instances, what happens is you actually have to, you know, uh, create the proteins by attenuating the virus or killing the virus and then re-injecting that, that dead or attenuated virus back into you or using another viral vector of, of true viral protein. That, 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 that actually requires, you know, a much higher dose range. So when you hear about all these talks about, oh, we're going to have a billion doses prepared by X day, that's a lot. It's well, impossible. and that's and that's part of what they were saying was that like so that like one of the big constraints with this 
is okay. So now you have competing technologies, which means you're not going to start building or gearing up or ramping up factories to manufacture these, these vaccines until you know which one is good or which one's good. So that so once that happens or once you get close enough to that then they'll start building out the factories or retrofitting the factories or doing whatever there's going to be a time lag there with getting that done and getting that up to code and getting that up to spec before they can even start production mass production on it so a lot of the extra investment that the governments have done is actually to say we will pay for all that manufacturing scale up the problem that you got is that these guys are only in phase two trial so they yep. don't know the size of the dose yet. <laughs> yes. Dose ranging studies, right? That's what phase two is. It's kind of looking at safety, looking at dose ranging. So they have no idea what size of the doses they're going to need, or they're going to need booster shots, or how, much, how big the population is going to be that they're qualified for. So they're making a lot of guesses. And so, and the trouble is, you know, you're dealing either with a scientist at, at, at a company, they're saying one thing, and you're talking about the business represent business relations guys on the other side trying to kind of you know, codify the, the science and say, here's the, what we The politicians, right. if you will. Go, oh my gosh, it's not, exactly quite, it's not exactly what we meant. But uh, okay, you know, it's all been released, what the hell? <laughs> so that, that's what's happening a lot right now. Hey, Fred. Um, yeah. So this is probably going to be the most morbid question I'm ever going to ask in my life. Um, no, but, um, but it's ready. serious. At what point does it become, like the cases are going up, deaths are going down, right? At what point? I don't want to say, is it not news? Cause you're never going to stop death, right? That's physically impossible. Is it when it becomes on par with flu, when we know that we have a vaccine, I guess at what point, um, you know, because right now they're reporting, Hey, three cases discovered in whatever city and that's news. So it's like, well, yeah, like, let's look at the big picture. I guess at what point is this like, is it n- considered normalized? Is it, if that eats, you know, if that's even a possibility. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you know, your normal winter, you don't hear about the numbers of people dying from the flu during a normal Not flu. Not a word. You, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I should say one more thing about the vaccine um, is that, number there's a couple more things about the vaccine that are kind of important to say. First, coronaviruses are very difficult to vaccinate against. We, they have a lot, they make a lot of protein. They, they can fool the, the, the vaccine. They, they have a lot of immune responses that are, are false immune responses that we're going to have to deal with. Second big thing is you have to deal with people who are over 60. Over 60, our immune systems have all, have all shifted quite a bit. I'm, I'm one of those people, unfortunately. Uh, and so what happens when you get over 60 is your immune system is slightly out of sync. Vaccines help get the, the, the immune system back in sync. The problem is that when you're over 60, you have an awful lot more uh, adverse events, side effects, and if you're immune, if you're also simultaneously compromised, you could have you know bad bad adverse events with, with with the vaccine that makes it all the more difficult. So we'll probably have these partial vaccines, partial and and, and partial um, uh, partial uh, therapies, all coming together to work together. The answer to your question is when we get when we start to get a sufficient backstop that the, the, the people who control the news, largely the wealthier, uh, feel that they're safe and can go return back to normalcy. That means flying around, it means you know, doing their work and life without, without really a, a, a big shift in the, in the way they, you know, like, like, like the flu. You still get the flu today. Uh, and sadly, you know, uh, like 40,000 people, 30,000, 30 to 40,000 people will die of it this year. But it's in control, and we've got backstops for it. And people should take flu shots or not, depending on what they what they want to do, and take their own basis of risk. But it's not um, something that changes your lifestyle. I think when the re- death rate is such that, uh, and and the chances of this significant long term health effects are such that if you get the disease, it's going to affect you know you and and societal leaders. I think it'll still be in the in, in, in the news at that point. When it stops affecting societal leaders, when it stops, um, even if the death rates remain pretty high in lesser developed countries, and we have a backstop that most people have access to in the United States, I think at that point it'll stop being uh, news. But that's going to be probably, you know, and we'll we'll get more and more in, immune to to it. Right now, we'll no pun across. intended. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not truly immune, but you. <laughs> I should say desensitized. Well, well, my take, my take has been if you run a ticking timer on the news about car deaths and run all day cycles and every accident gets on the news, then every death gets on every the news, right? And accidents too, like people are going to be effing paranoid to get in their car. You know what I mean? So like, that's why I'm trying to figure out what, what rate is it? 
you know, n nor is it considered just normalized where, you know what I mean? Cause right now the, the, the fear thing is just as, I mean, just as scary as the, the actual disease, you know, the actual uh, virus. What I, what I found personally was once, you know, um, so what, what happened in the United States is sort of interesting, right? We went up a curve and then we flattened out and then we, we sort of, we felt like we took off again, right? In that flat period, as, as everything was sort of calming down and looked like our, our, the, our, our key values were getting down to zero and or down, down below one and it looked like people were opening up successfully. I don't know if you felt it, but I felt that there was a lot less discussion about that, right? We heard a lot more about China and the trade agreements. We heard a lot more about 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 mm -hmm. different about different news that, that started to sort of the the, the the noise level was there was a lot of other stuff happening that they kind of drowned out and I, I saw that, that sort of the month of June for me was sort of quiet you know looked like looked like opening was working looked like you know what, what President Trump was saying was correct looks like our economy is starting to back open up again and then started I, like, hey I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm back on track what happened really unfortunately if you look at the data was it looked like the curve looked like this. It went up, flat, and up again. Now we're in the up, uh, straight, uh, up, upgrade again. If you do the math, and you- are talking about that, the curve for cases, right? Case, case new yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, new case. If you do the math, and you took out the decrease that was occurring in New York and New Jersey, you know what the curve looked like instead of like this? It looked like that. Wow. That was the news that we missed. It never went away. It never stopped. It was all, so all the other, other states were, you know, boom, were just blowing up. But the and super that, hot spots were getting things under control. But the super hot spots were getting things under control, which, which caused it to look like it was level. And so the news cycle sort of said, oh, looks like everything's going to be good. No news here. And that is, is where I think the news, where, 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 the, where, where the news, you know, is sort of interesting in that if you level off at a plateau and there's no real perturbations, then the news cycle sort of stop. If it starts to take off or come down, that's big news. Well, and we're when, gonna have a big takeoff in October this year, uh, uh, November time. So when Florida just started, when they started, when their news cycle started, I poo-pooed it because they had, and Dave like, called, like made fun of me because I said, well, they have half the cases, less than half the deaths, they have twice the population. And I'm like, meh. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, they just kept going, kept going. Then I, you know, I finally shut up. Um, but like, is it like they got it later? Because if you look at how, well, like, Michigan, Jersey, uh, New York got it kind of almost in instantaneously, and now you're seeing Florida, Texas, which were like, yeah, nothing. They're getting it now, and then California now is is the worst it's been. So is it, is it did it kind of just like move just like just like the movies <laughs> with with like a contagion movie? No, I just you know. Is that is that accurate? Are we ever going to look like a Verizon coverage map? Is I think what Bob's looking. At. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what happened was the, the the virus was brought in by certain people, certain vectors uh, at certain times. We actually know a lot about those vectors now. We've been able to kind of go back and look and see how you know who brought this in at what time and so on. Uh, and we're doing a lot of genetics to figure out which cases were first, second, third. And it turns out that you know. Uh, New York and Michigan were, uh, and California were sort of unlucky. Uh, a lot of people were, went to uh, work uh, with the Chinese auto manufacturers back and forth. That brought the in Detroit and, 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 and in California, there was a lot of movement in the, in the, in the, new, in the new year period for the Chinese, our Chinese population in California, that brought it in. And in New York, it was the Europeans. The Europeans brought it in, and it was a much worse virus, as it turns out, much more contagious than the original Wuhan virus, which was, which was mutated by the guy that hit Germany, and the, Ger the Germans brought it in. So we actually can follow and track a lot of this, and it turns out that some of these states were just sort of lucky and being later uh, in terms of the, the vector, and it took them that much longer to get to the exponential curve, but the virus is the virus, and that's what the biology does, right? You know, it goes, first you have one, then it replicates, you have two, the, pretty easy and then four and then eight and oh shit you know 16 and then 32 and all of a sudden you're yep. off the map and that's that's the nature of biology and 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 that's the that's the killer uh in that for, for the united states what we did is we didn't we didn't preserve our scale right so the two things that when i talk to governments are consistent the first is everything's fragmented so your your ppe comes from all different directions and you're not sure how, what the real aggregate demand is or the aggregate supply 
Uh, so you don't know what's going on with your mask, gloves, all the protective equipment, all the testing. The same problem um, is happening, and, and now in drug supply, sadly. And the second big thing is learning curve. Every governor now, and every now mayor, and every person now has to figure out what it's like to live under a, a situation where normally the right answer when you have a crisis is to sit back and say, let me take stock. Let me think about this. Maybe, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Let me take a couple of days. The problem with exponential growth is you take a couple of days and your problem is doubled, tripled, yeah. quadrupled. And that's something that, that every governor, every decision maker now is having to figure out for themselves. And that's a shame because we, kept, we, we could have learned quite a bit from that first round and we, and we haven't. Well, and some of it is, I mean, let's be honest, some of it is human nature slash ego. You know, you're seeing a lot of these governors that, you know, hey, we're never going to close. We're never going to do this. And all of a sudden, here we are three months later. Yeah, shit, we're going to close the bars, God. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, you know, because, I mean, and that's the thing, you know, you look at, you know, you're talking about like, you know, in the South right now, there was all that talk two months ago about, well, hey, this is just going to disappear over the summer because where it's hot isn't getting it. So it, it must be fine when the hot shows up. You know, clearly that was not reality. <laughs> well, actually, what, what happened interestingly is that it got so hot, everyone drove inside being air conditioning. Yeah. And so we think that actually drove, sadly, what, what normally is going to reduce the virus load actually increased it in those states because uh, 120 degrees, you know, in, in Arizona, you don't want to be outside. So you're all driven inside. So it's sort of interesting that although it probably does reduce the viral transmission slightly, the fact that everyone's inside now makes it, that much times worse right. uh, overwhelms the, the factor. I think a couple of things you said were, were important. The first is human nature. You know, uh, I think the leaders always want to say, you know, we're, we're, we're going to move forward. You know, here's our plan. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. We're going to open up continuously because you want to set expectations and that makes sense. You know, you want to make sure that now, unfortunately, in almost every state, there are a few exceptions like Pennsylvania, a few, uh, a few others. There was no discussion about, okay, Here's the sequence for opening. One, two, three, four, five, six. There was really, when they announced it, there was very little discussion about if we're at number four and, we're, and we see X, Y, Z, we're going to go back to level three. There was no discussion about reversal, of course. Yep. And that, 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 was a, that was a, it turned out a tactical error because we were hoping for the best. The last thing about human nature is magical thinking. You know, we always, there's been so much data out there that our natural tendency is to look for confirmation, right? So we say- ah, Confirmation well, bias is a scary thing. thing. Yep. <laughs> you know, so if you're, if you're the governor of, of, you know, Iowa, you're saying, you know, yeah, you know, Florida's blowing up, but hey, it doesn't look so bad in Montana. Maybe maybe we're on the right track here. And you kind of pick and choose a little bit of the data and then you'll twist it slightly to make the story right and feel right and talking points come out. And you just sort of go down a slippery slope and all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, you know, we sort of got off track. And I think that happens a lot to people too. You, get, you sort of have this magical thinking, oh, we're going to have a vaccine in, in six months. Everything's going to be fine. doesn't really matter about these death rates now because yep. in six months it's all be gone. And so, uh, and then you ignore a lot of the data that is sadly not confirming and you suddenly you get a, a very warped picture of, of, of reality. And you've got a lot of people promoting it because of course you're a leader and you've got a lot of people who are helping you, you know, get the message out that you want to have out. And Reversal then is really hard. <laughs> That's in my experience. Well, yeah, because yeah, nobody, it, it, especially in a position of leadership, you never want to go, okay, I was wrong. Yeah, I mean that that's that's just not something you run. That's just not a good thing. For, you know, It'd be nice I, to do once in a while. Well, yeah, but I mean, again, it's you know, human nature and ego kind of prohibits you from doing that a lot of the time. Um, so, I, mean, I, I work with a lot of these guys, and they're they're all good people. They're all working like they're all working around the clock trying to fix problems, and they get caught in these. Oh my gosh, kind of moments. And well, and again, because things evolve. Okay. What was true 30 days ago might not be true today. And, yeah. and that's just how it is. Yeah, and there are a few things that happened, you know, where the transmission rate went up 4.5 times and on certain viral, uh, certain viral uh, 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 strains. We don't really know. The asymptomatic rate went from what we thought was 20% to 50%. You know, all these factors, and all of a sudden all the models are wrong, and you're saying, oh my gosh, if I had known we were going to have 200,000 deaths by September 1st, I probably would have done stuff differently. But no, no, no right. at the time, I thought it was only going to be 50,000 deaths, and there was probably an order of what Europe was doing, and, and it was at that time. Yeah, that, that number is still not sitting very well with me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> hey, hey, Fred, um, I just got one more thing. You know, there's been a, a, a snippet that's been floating around uh, directly from the CDC's website talking about positive test cases. 
basically stating that it's the same. I don't know if we talked about this last time or not, but it basically states it's uh, positive tests are the same as the common cold. I don't know the exact verbiage, um, but it's straight from the CDC website. Um, I don't know if you've heard that or what your thoughts are on that, because I find it kind of... Uh, I don't, Bob, even I don't understand what you're asking. What do you mean? No, there's a... Um, there, there's a, it says, what do your results mean? It's from CDC and I'm looking at it right now. How he goes, there's a positive result means you have antibodies from an infection from a virus from the same family of viruses called coronaviruses, such as the one that causes the common cold. Right. So like I've seen it being oh, shared. Oh, okay. So I guess let me, uh, like, okay. This is how we write our blog post. Bob throws out a rough draft and I rewrite yeah, yeah. it for him. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think what he's asking is, so like the antibody tests that are coming yeah. in, um, Apparently on the CDC website, it's and and I and I kind of get what you're asking, Bob. Like, so there's I wasn't you know, speaking German. No, but you know, but so COVID is a corona. Like we've talked about this. There's the family coronaviruses, and and right. then you've got the common cold and COVID and SARS and MERS and all that fun stuff down in there. Um, so are the antibody tests testing specifically for COVID antibodies, or are they testing for coronavirus antibodies, which might be a false positive from a from a COVID standpoint? Yeah. No, uh, so so what they're looking for is did the I, did, I, did I nail that down right, Bob? Translation, yeah, Google Translate. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, so so the answer is uh, that, that's a question of sensitivity and specificity, uh, and these are these tests are are are, are quite specific for the coronavirus spike. So okay. What we've done is we've looked for very highly conform, highly uh, uh, what they call conserved portions of the coronavirus proteins that are consistent just with the coronavirus. And that tends to be the spike protein because it, it you know, attaches, attaches very specifically to a particular receptor in your cell. And so those are highly conserved um, and, and we actually are testing for, for response to that uh, in the PCR test. So uh, that, that test is, is, is very specific. What we're looking for uh, on the antibody test is IgG, IgM memory, memory antibodies that actually have responded to that, that spike protein. So it is, it is uh, probably about um, overall 85% uh, you know, uh, when you combine the predictive value, uh, it's about 85% predictive uh, of whether you've had the, the antibody. The, trick, uh, the bigger issue actually for antibody tests is when you have them because uh, you have to have them within a certain period of time. Uh, for, the, for all these tests, otherwise they start to decline. You won't have a high titer, uh, and so you need to get it done. At, best time to have it done is about 14 days after symptoms have stopped. Gotcha. Have tighter levels. Fair. There. So. All right. So yeah. have 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 we scared the shit out of everyone enough for one night? Or <laughs> <laughs> we talk about comic books uh, after this, just so clear our palates. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> This, well, hey. so how, was, how was the bar crawl? Because because bar, bars are are are, are a real challenge. Um, you know, the UK came out and said it is impossible to go to a bar and not so and not socially and not not socially distance because you know you're everyone's having well and time. especially after a couple of drinks you, everybody's throwing their arms around each other you're finding someone to sneak off in the corner with you're yeah yeah and so it, it turns out that bars nightclubs seem to be and and, and you know. Restaurants seem to be responsible for probably about ten percent of our overall transmission, unfortunately. And and yet they're catching ninety percent of the flack on social media. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the media. <laughs> You'd think that's where it all is if you listen, just talk to everybody. Yeah, yeah. But the real the real problem is that if, if it's a super spreader event, then it can be responsible for a lot more than that. So what? Yeah, happens I mean, you, you got an elevator responsible for seventy two cases for the love of God. So yeah. Yeah. So that's not a uh, good news story, though. But if you want to <laughs> target a bar in East Lansing, that's yeah. Hey, 72 people from a bar, a huge story. 72 people from an elevator. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Shut that down. That's not news. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, again, Fred, dude, thank you so much for taking oh, the time. Oh, it's a pleasure. And, and always, like, guys. Great to see I you. I know you're I, a busy I, guy. And I mean, no, you're, I, I wish you're going, I wish to, you're going to meetings that involve suits and ties, and we're sitting around, for all you know, not even wearing pants in our houses. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and, always and, a pleasure. So where, always, where do people find you? Uh, where do people find oh, you if they want to talk to you or, or, or get you out for speaking or anything like that? Yeah, fredbrown.com is my website. Take a look. It's all about COVID. And then fred.brown.covid at gmail.com is another place to reach me. If you have any you know, specific questions, I'm happy to answer them directly. Yeah, I do it all the time. 
phenomenal Dad, again dude seriously I, I appreciate you coming on so much like it's these, an honor seriously i, oh, I mean it, these these always. these bring so much clarity to me and also kind of instill a little bit of a sense of dread but like it but in a good way like I, I feel like everybody should have a little bit of a sense of dread right now so oh well it's a pleasure we, we'll find out more and i'd love to come back and tell you when we, when we know a little more whenever you're ready Ab absolutely all right well i think we're gonna dive into our our usual rigmarole of 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 comic books and movies and all that kind of stuff so feel free to drop off and and, and we'll talk to you again soon fred i appreciate I will you. See you guys soon next thanks, time fred. Thanks. thanks much man you bet Every time I see him, I'm like, for Christ's sake, you're a bishop. My name is Fred. Like, <laughs> I want to say it so bad. I just... <laughs> and then every time, did you? I'm, did you... I'm genuinely stunned you never have. I, well, did I you genuinely... catch what he said? He kept saying Vector, and I kept going Victor. I said it like twice. <laughs> yeah, like, Vector, Vector. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. But hey, this, this portion of the show is oh, yeah, brought yeah. to you by our friends at Private Internet Access, founded in two. 2010 they're an award-winning vpn service provider with over a million customers all over the world private internet access vpn allows you to encrypt your connection so it keeps everything you do online confidential and secure your isp the government or hackers will no longer have access to your data they have unlimited access to over 3200 vpn servers in 46 countries they have dedicated apps for all platforms windows mac linux android you can protect up to 10 devices at the same time and because they believe in transparency, they are now open source. That's why PC Mag is named PIA Editor's Choice for eight consecutive years. You can basically use them however you want to encrypt your data, hide your IP address if you're on public Wi-Fi, download anything safely, secure your bank transactions, and stay untraceable. You can even watch all the content from streaming services that have geo restrictions in place. They have they keep no log no logs, and it's been proven in federal court twice. So the only person that'll know what you're doing on the internet is you. And there's a, even a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied, but you know what? PIA has provided a special deal for us where you can get their first 12 months for only $2 and 85 cents a month. That's 76% off. And then months 13 and 14 are free. Just do us a favor. Go to www.privateinternetaccess.com slash IT in the D to get started protecting yourself online today. That's privateinternetaccess.com slash I T in the D. Sorry, I, I had to go pour myself a shot after. I don't. After that, I do not blame you. I do not blame I, you. Ugh. What is uh? So a uh, new Star Wars animated series announced today. Uh, looks... Yeah, which I swear to God, when I read, I read it was going to be the bad bitch. I and I was like, wait, what? I'm like, how? Why is that in Star Wars font? It's, no, it's the, bad batch. the bad batch. Batch. Yes, tentacles. Cool. N T. Big difference. Huge. Uh, Clone Force 99, the characters from uh, four episodes of season seven of Clone Wars. Did they did they necessitate having their own standalone? I mean, was they were, they they were like a huge fan yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know some of the groups were, but I didn't know if that one was. But that, I'm going to watch it. I don't care if it's two stormtroopers playing golf. I'm going to watch it. You know this. <laughs> yeah, these were uh, wondering that we ain't found shit. I'll watch it. I'm good. <laughs> oh, before we get too far, too, this is a, just on a personal note. Um, huge shout out to the IT team at United Shore. Um, we've been working with those guys for probably the past, for the little bit over the past year, and uh, best group of people I ever worked with. And it just uh, hats off to you guys. And uh, I miss most of you, and uh, not a couple of you, I won't, but I'm just kidding. Um, but no, just a shout out to all you guys. Appreciate you. Cool. Yeah. Um, Big news today, or also, I guess let's let's do the rundown. So, Bad Batch comes out twenty twenty one. You got the Umbrella Academy season two trailer that dropped. That's coming out in a month. Uh, you got the Lucifer season five trailer that dropped. Uh, that's coming out August twenty first. So, are you like me, where you completely forget like Umbrella Academy? Like, I remember how it ended, but I don't remember why. And now I'm thinking I got to rewatch the whole goddamn thing again. So, yes, and honestly, I think that's kind of the downside of binging is, like, we burned through these series, like, over the span of, a, over like, over the course of a weekend. Yeah. And then the next season doesn't come out until a year later. It's not like, you know, where you, back in the old days, right. where, you know, like, you know, you'd, like, there'd be a summer break of, like, maybe four to six weeks of shows, 
you know, and then they would, you know, you'd have the, you know, the fall season and the spring season and da da da, da and, and you wouldn't have as much of a gap between seeing those. And I've, dude, I found myself doing that. Like, I, well, shit, when, um, when the clone troop, when the clone wars was coming back for season seven, I went back and burned through the first five seasons again. Um, it just because, yeah, right. and for, you know, for that very reason. And, and honestly, I'll probably, I probably won't need to do it with Lucifer just because I've watched that again, like over the course of the past two months, I've, I've, I've gone through and burned through the first four seasons again. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, Umbrella Academy, I'm probably right there with you. Like that's one that I watched when it came out and I was all about it. And, and yeah, I'm, I like, I, yeah, there was the time travel thing and, and, and the kid had a sex doll or a mannequin or whatever, <laughs> and, you know, and then there was this, see, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to go back and watch it again. Although the other one that you shot across, which I really, and I, I meant to, I meant to shoot this back in the email. Um, Steph actually turned me on to guns akimbo, um, a yes. few months ago, dude, if you have not wait, anybody out there watching, listening, whatever, if you have not caught guns akimbo yet, it's on prime. Um, it is first off it's Harry Potter, <laughs> but, but not looking like Harry Potter, um, along with a Harley Quinn wannabe, uh, but like a, like goth slash cyberpunk Harley Quinn. Um, oh, and, she's it is, cute. and it is the most, I'm into goth cyberpunk girls, but that oh, was not an insult. <laughs> um, it is the most cartoonish, video game over the top just stupid violent but hilarious it is such and the premise is amazing they did such a good job with that movie it reminded me of uh you know it was sold to me from one of the guys that i worked with and he said if you liked hardcore henry you're gonna love guns akimbo and i'm like what is and i and i watched the movie i loved every minute of it and i ended it and i said what a stupid name and i'm like <laughs> Because like, well, you said, do you know it from the meme with with uh, Harry Potter with the bur with the bear uh, slippers with the two guns? And I go, yeah, I've seen it everywhere. And he goes, it's from this. And I go, that's weird. I'm like, I've seen that picture a hundred times. Oh, no, you, I didn't realize what it was from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that movie. Honestly, I don't know if it's the name is just dumb or if it didn't why it didn't catch on. But that's it's it's seriously. If you like John Wick type movies, this is better. I don't want to yeah. say better because I'm going to get yelled at by you're somebody. Yelled at because no, it's yeah. not. And, 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 no, it's stupid, Bob. Dumb. Um, but yeah, it's well worth the. And, um, Wait a minute, Tammy. Tammy's trying to chime in and say that Umbrella Academy is July 11th. That would that would be two days ago. It was two days ago. It dropped already. No, I don't know. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, Old Guard was really good too. I was. Um, I, I was looking. That. I was uh, looking forward to seeing it. It's got Charlize Theron. Um, and it's basically um, this company. It's a, it's a pharmaceutical company that's tracking these five immortals. Um, they want to basically tap their, tap their bone marrow and blood to have a serum for everlasting uh, oil of Olay for, for, you know, to, for people to live forever. So they're trying to, to basically hire this like army to kill these five people. Um, great watch another one of those fun you know good story great watch um definitely highly recommended <laughs> kind of got kind of, greg walters just chimed in and he was like yeah i'm into cyberpunk girls yeah show me someone who isn't and i'll show you someone who's wrong <laughs> right <laughs> um but then like uh i'm really upset though that daniel snyder never took uh, your our uh, advice to change the logo of the washington redskins to a potato Dude, um, I, I, I put that out there like four or five, six years ago now where it just end the controversy and make the logo a red skin potato and just be done with it and, and just make everyone happy. You still get to sell new logoed merchandise. You still get to sell new everything. Um, and it would just, and honestly, it would just be the, it would be the dumbest PR move in the history of, of whatever. Um, but so they, but the thing is they've, they've announced that they're changing it, but they have not announced what they're changing it to or when that decision will be made as to what when they're changing what they're changing it to so are we going into another season with the redskins even though everybody's trying to let them off the hook now snyder was adamant for years saying type this in all capital letters i am never changing the name like that's that was a thing. Um, yeah, welcome to welcome to Romeo Void there, Dan. Never say never. That's so that. one of my uh, <laughs> one of my uh, better posts that I've done on Facebook. I uh, it was one of my uh, Dave Classic posts on ninety seven one when they were talking about it. I said 
I go, since it's 2020, I go, let's just change them all. And I listed off like all the teams. I go, the Giants, I go, to offend short little people. The Cowboys should be the cow people. Bears, I go, why only exclusive to big hairy guys? Packers, they're meat eaters. Chargers, they leave their fossil fuel abusers. Vikings, they hurt people a thousand years ago. 49ers, capitalists. Browns, poop is offensive. Anyway, I can go on and on. But I'm like, you might as well just change them all, man. The Reds, I mean, what happened to anti-communism? Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, change that. Marge Shottery said Nazi got lost her team for saying that. Um, Who knew? Yeah, anyway. Uh, apparently, Umbrella Academy is the 31st, so it is, it is just a, a couple weeks away. So here's a, the here's a thing that I, I t- uh, when I emailed it about, I, was, I rented a movie called Bent, and it had um, Bones from the new Star Trek. Um, God, who else did it have in it? Oh, Sofia Bicara was in it. So I'm like, yeah, whatever, I'll watch it. It says like something about like treason and assassins. I'm like, cool, okay. I'll watch it. And, and Sofia Vergara, so why not? Yeah, yeah, so it's got the TNT logo on the sides. So I'm like, ah, whatever, it's edited, and it's going to have a stupid commercial every half an hour. Well, all of a sudden, I'm watching it, and it's like they're in a strip club, pay no mind. Well, now, the Bones, the main guy, I call him Bones, I don't even know what his real name is, like something, Keith Urban or something. Car- Carl um, Urban. Carl Urban. I was like, yeah, wait, you. isn't Keith Urban a country dude? Yeah, 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 shut up. Um, let me finish. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, they show like, they show like side boob and I'm like, all right, it's TNT. Like that's a lot. Then they show full boob. And I'm like, wait a minute, is this TNT? And then, well, then so Carl, and, and, uh, like, where did, like, where did you get this? Was this just being broadcast or was it? No, I rented it from Xfinity on demand. Oh, well, I mean, just different showed, standards. I just looked under movies. Yeah. But then so, they do drops two F bombs. So and I'm like, like uh, comedy central is the same the TNT way. Where does the part come in? Well, I know comedy central when they do, uh, the roasts they're like yeah no like, dude like, like gonna... no i mean so like so south park um after midnight isn't censored um and they're you know they you know the 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 shit episode the, the what the f- yeah i mean that's like it's they don't right. censor anything after midnight um and, and, I've, and i've run into that a couple times like with you know like movies and that kind of stuff. i think i think i was watching the usa network Cause I was like just laying in bed trying to fall asleep. And so I threw, they had bad boys and bad boys two on. And I'm like, all right, this will let me shut off my brain and whatever. And like, and all of a sudden, like I, I hear them swearing and I'm like, wait, what? And this is like maybe nine, 10 o'clock. Um, and I'm like, what? And like, and it, sure enough, like it's, it's not edited. And at first I thought somebody screwed up. And this is why I started looking into this. Like I'm like, Oh, somebody's losing their job at the USA network. Um, and apparently, like, the rules on cable uh, broadcasting um, got tweaked a little bit as far as what they can get away with after certain hours or during certain days. Like, so, yeah. Well, that was always the thing when we were kids to watch Channel 9 after midnight because there's always, like, some dirty movie on. It's like, you know. <laughs> like, wouldn't that be CBC? Cable. Yeah, it was Canadian, yeah. But they had, like, and they're, they're government controlled. But, yeah, I was just kind of shocked. Um, not as, you know, um, I'm trying to find a good segue to dive into this one. Um, but the, I love a good conspiracy theory and went until I don't. Bro. And I, so here's what makes me mad about this. So let, let me, so if you haven't heard, I'm going to start it off. Then I'm going to backtrack. Wayfair, the, the story came out and it's not a story. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to get mad about how the story got released. It's, it's a Reddit post. Let's right. Let's be, it's a but it Reddit got picked post. up by the media. It got picked up by the media who are running with it because apparently Wayfair has a couple industrial cabinets that are like ten thousand dollars. And out because of they, the, they're they're different specs, they're different everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're industrial grade and they happen to have the names of missing children. But if you look at the database of missing children, there's over eight hundred thousand of them. Right. Um, so you're gonna hit a name. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna hit a name. Again, coincidence so, is not causality. So now a couple of people on Reddit are like, eh? Eh? and then a couple people like share it and then it gets picked up by the buzzfeed and then the then it gets picked well, up by like, well then you have the, the well wayfair is supplying uh all of the stuff uh to ice and a lot of these kids are disappearing from ice detention centers and so there's this whole funnel going on and uh, listen my only thing I'm oh, gonna, say, Greg, Greg, the whole Q, we've already done the deep dive on QAnon. We're just not getting, we're not getting into it now. <laughs> <laughs> My only take on it is if this can just shed some light on on the atrocities going on with child trafficking, 
maybe the better, but it just, they're not being shipped in cabinets. They're, it's getting done in front of, probably in front of your nose and you don't even know it. Um, Reality. I mean, that's, yeah. and that's very true. And then, and I'm sorry, but like, and then the, the offshoot that came, like, I guess something else that bubbled up in there today, the, that I think it was the last article I shot across to you guys. Um, apparently there's this new thing where forests um, are basically just the sapling um, uh, the sapling farm for what uh, eventually forest or what forest used to be and like the giant mesas and you know the big stone formations like the one from like Close Encounters of the Third Kind um, that's actually a petrified tree trunk uh, from from what forest used to be on earth that's that's yeah that was that that was ugh. what yeah. But yeah, no, Bob, that, that people, these are things that people believe, Bob. These when are... I was 15, I went to the Petrified Forest with my cousins from, uh, from Chicago, and uh, I stole a piece, and it was, I heard it's a, it, like, it's pretty big, it's like a $1,500 fine and a misdemeanor, and I'm admitting it now 30 years Ooh, later. You're right. I'm pretty sure the stat, well, I mean, it's a federal <laughs> offense, so it, it might not have expired. You might want to be careful with that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't really steal anything. So, but the, you know, and then I, I guess you know, just because we were just talking with Fred, um, so you've got uh, Disney Orlando opening, Disney Hong Kong closing. <laughs> Dude, have you did you see the videos of Disney Orlando? That did looks. Did you see the story about the streamers? No. That were oh. so. I guess there, there was a family of streamers that were in like a gift shop kind of thing while they were filming themselves. And they were complaining about having been in, they had to go to the first aid station. Oh, the ones that were hacking a lung? Yeah, that were like, oh, yes. that were sick as dogs and basically name a, corona, name a COVID symptom. They were talking about it. Um, but they were still wandering around Disney because they needed to be there for the selfie Shiza. and for the streams and all that shit. Um, and they were planning on going to Animal Kingdom the next day. I so meant to follow up and look and see if they got banned from the park or kicked out or anything, but that was that, that, and that, and again, that just gets back to one of the things we were talking about is that people are just dumb. And like, that's, it's, I think the best meme I've seen about this is that getting through this is a group project. And this is why I always hated group projects. Is this why everybody's yelling at it, at, at invisible people on Facebook yes, every day? This, this is why, this is why Mikey is shouting at people and why I'm shouting at people. So like, who are you yelling at? <laughs> like anybody who, I to whom it applies. <laughs> but is anyone reading like so here's the thing and i'm gonna of course i'm gonna con be contrarian on this is anyone that's like f the system is gonna read dave's post and go you know what i should I, like, you know what i i get it but and and i will put this in context there are two people that i know um and they're related and one of them has done a complete 180 on the like the virus as a whole um, as well as a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff, because we've had a lot of conversations about it stemming from my posts. Um, the other one continues to double down. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Um, but no, so I mean, I, and I do, I, I mean, I think it's, you know, like the, the meme says, this isn't the time to be nice to, it's not the time to be nicer to your three black friends. It's time to be louder to your hundred white ones. Like that's, that's, the, that's the reality of the situation. Do you uh, have you lost money yet on Gislaine? Well, how do you pronounce it? Gislaine Maxwell's. Uh... Gislaine Maxwell. <laughs> no, I have not, dude. So I wanted I wanted to make sure I wrote these down uh, because I mean, let's be honest, this is morbid as shit. Uh, but there are official odds on how <laughs> Gislaine Maxwell is going to die. Um, accident is currently running at two to one. Uh, suicide. Those are good odds, by the way. Suicide running at three to one. Uh, you have killed by another inmate or natural causes coming in at four to one. Uh, you have COVID uh, related illness uh, coming in at five to one, which I'm surprised was not higher because I think that's the one that all the conspiracy nuts are going with that she's going to turn up with coronavirus and wind up dead. Uh, and then other is sitting at six to one. Can, uh, I, apparently the person in the cell next to her just, just coughing in the air vent underneath her uh, in her HVAC system. Is as the conspiracy theory, you know? Did Dave? But, but I mean, like I said, again, they're fun to watch, and I mean, apparently, uh, I, I'm, dude, the more stories that are coming out about her, like apparently she's been on the run um, ever since uh, ever since Epstein's suicide, uh, and she's moved thirty seven or thirty eight times. Uh, she's ha she has ex British military with her, uh, or they had with her as. How do they find her? Um, so she bought, apparently bought this place in Bradford, New Hampshire, um, which I, I know where it is. Uh, and well, I mean, I know where the 
city is. I don't know what. I was going to say, don't tell me. You're... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've never been. Let's not get those rumors started, Bob. Shut up. Um, you get Joe Rogan that clip right there, really is right. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, so, <laughs> you jackass. Uh, no. So, um, and and apparently she bought it in an all cash transaction back in December. Um, and they've been kind of keeping an eye on it, waiting for her to get there because apparently she's been doing a lot of like crashing at people's houses and staying here. And so, like I said, she moved 37 times over the course of the past year. Um, and so she's been, so they've been waiting for her to get to this place that she bought. Um, and, and she showed up and that's where they nabbed her. This, uh, I, I haven't tried, I've tried to keep up with it, but like she had, but she has all her shit, right? Like she so I know she's hinting on what she has, but like, oh, there's talks that she has those hard drives from that we have talked about from the Epstein documentary, uh, where that entire house was wired with video every square inch of it. Dude, for um, the love of God, release that shit and freaking. Well, it honestly, people. just makes me think that all those odds are a little too high, <laughs> right? So I was like, two to one odds. I'll put a hundo on that all day. That's, <laughs> and X, and usually that's usually stuff like that is like four to five. You know, you put a hundred to win one hundred and twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Randy, your your big uh, your big company went poop the bed. Uh, Quibby. Quibby. I, and I feel I I I would like to just reinforce the fact that we told I you. Didn't... Stop trying to make Quibi happen. It's never going to happen. No. I signed up for the uh, 90 day free trial, but I canceled it. If, I uh, if apparently so did 90% of everybody else. <laughs> no, I was going to say, if sad trombone was a, was a sentence, Quibi reportedly lost 90% of early users after free trials expired. Because well, it doesn't, it, pa- it didn't pass the sniff test. I told you that, Randy. It was stupid. There were some decent concepts, but the execution was bad. Wow. Um, so I it's about as a about horror a stupid show and a cooking show, and the cooking show didn't have any time for the actual cooking. It was all about the, like the the premise and the judging. And I was like, show the cooking. <laughs> it's about that's, as stupid as me that's trying what I'm to figure for. Yeah, yeah. I said it's about as stupid as me trying to figure out HBO Max. <laughs> I need yeah, which 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 I I think is hilarious. Like I shot you a text, and I'm like, hey, dude, just for what it's worth. I just signed in. It, there was, it was no trial. It was no anything. It just let me write in with my Xfinity credentials. And you were like, yeah, I tried that a hundred times. It doesn't work for me. And then like 20 minutes later, I get a text. Yeah, it just worked. FML. <laughs> all right. All right. Another thing that you can hold over my head for the next 10 years. Um, I had to reset my password on Comcast and log into Xfinity. And then it let me do it because I was locked out. of. <laughs> That's nice. why it didn't work. Dude. So I, I love one of the stories, it would never be really a story, but it was uh, somebody started collecting. Okay, so what are 25 things said in 2020 that would make no sense to anybody in 2019? Um, and, and, I, you know, and it's things like, hey, go put the packages in the garage. We'll wipe them down in a few days. Um, I didn't that, do that for the record thing. <laughs> that, that, that was a beautiful Zoom wedding. <laughs> like I know, I know somebody who just did a Zoom baby shower over the weekend. Uh, they wouldn't let me into the bank because I wasn't wearing my face mask. <laughs> no, is it time to change from our daytime pajamas into our nighttime pajamas? Yeah, uh, my car gets eleven weeks per tank of gas. Yeah, y- yesterday I complained about wearing "quote unquote" outside clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, just find out how many people have been in her bubble before letting her come over. I'm using the hand sanitizer with aloe vera as a treat. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pasta or toilet paper left anywhere. That's true. <laughs> I don't, why? Uh, oh, hey, I've got to go. My preschooler has a Zoom meeting in a few minutes. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, I did. I just, I just thought that article was hilarious. It made me laugh. This is uh just ate my 39th loaf of homemade bread and traded the 40th for some toilet paper. That's a uh, why, why did that become a thing? Everybody's like, uh, you know, I'm gonna bake and I'm gonna, you know, like literally it's become like we have we've kind of slowed down a bit. My kids were like a dessert fiends for a while, making everything, and it was amazing. Oh, like, dude, I, yeah, my house, I think we talked about this. Both of our houses turned into like cupcake wars, like yeah, for yeah. a while, yeah. I, I put on like the 10 pounds that I thought I, you know, not on all of it, but at least 10 of it. Back. At least some of it. Um, but hey, we, uh, when we were talking about Star Wars, I thought this was kind of a cool story. Um, the number one movie at the box office last week, Empire Strikes Back. 
How is that going to happen? Because it's something that drive-ins are able to get their hands on, uh, and so they can show it. How many drive-ins? Plenty, apparently. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not like it made $30 million last weekend. Um, Dude. Seven six hundred thousand six hundred fifty thousand dollar gross, dude. That's was that's was the lot. number, and that's the number one movie at the box office. Six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So with wow. drive-ins and stuff comes some brilliant ideas, and there comes some really stupid ideas. Our neighborhood on next door wanted to park on the land that hasn't been built houses on yet, and and rent and get a permit from the city and charge forty dollars a car and play Bad Boys Three. I'm, I, I don't even know where to start. What, why? Why can't you just all open up your laptops on Zoom and then put Bad Boys 3 on your house? I can, I, I can put it on the TV right here. No, the first I, thing I said, right. The first thing I said is, okay, don't drive-ins like broadcast over an AM frequency to listen. Yep. How are you going to hear yeah. it? Like, yeah, because, yeah, you've got to have, and that, that's the thing is you've got to have, because I, I was talking with the, uh, with the guys down at DSE um, about that a couple months ago. Uh, at one point, they were talking about turning that side parking lot um, into a drive-in and wanted our help. And it was, you know, either they were going to, you know, show the movie on the thing and broadcast the sound through our app. Um, which would have been kind of cool. Um, but my concern there was there might have been a delay of a second or two just because of yeah. the bounce. People um, would hate it then. So I, no, so I actually went through and did – I now know exactly what it takes us to recreate Pump Up the Volume. I just – I want to make this absolutely clear. I now know exactly what technology I, know I need to be Christian Slater – and pump up the volume, and for us to run our own pirate radio station. There's the internet now, Dave. Did you, you remember right? But I, but I can do that. But I now, but not now. It's not a hypothetical. Now I have a shopping cart. <laughs> I, no, we're not. We got to do the bird, the WBRD. <laughs> we're, I, I have, I know, exa- and we can do it for a Dave, about eighteen hundred bucks. Is all. It's if you buy. ever wanted to make international news, this is our chance. <laughs> hey, that's all I'm, I'm saying. I'm in. I'm good. Let's do it. Screw and it. Does, that's it, though. That's it. One drop, and then that's it. It's. I. I, I still want that song with Jabba in between it. Like it's going to be bird Jabba. is the word, and then oh 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 oh, and then you know, bird is the word, and oh oh. You know what? Play it in the background so you don't have to hit trademark uh, rules. Because <laughs> I mean, what what would this? What would the? Uh, what, what were they called? The band? The 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 uh, trash um, trashmen. Yeah, surfing bird. Surfing like bird by the trash could, man. How yeah. much could rights be to play that song? I, over I'm, and over I'm all sure day? if we wrote them a check for fifty bucks, we could have it in perpetuity. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sure that's a thing. Well, Family Guy kind of, you know. Yeah, they probably gave them all their their money that they needed for that. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I honestly, I'm I'm actually kind of sorry I didn't throw it across the email chain. But Bob, you were in you were in the chat that I was talking about this in. Uh, I'm sure this will come. I, I, well, honestly, it came as a little bit of surprise because if there was one band in the history of, of, of bands that might want to be a little cautious about their fans because of a prior action. Like, let's say something went really, really wrong for a band and, and people died at one of their concerts. You'd think they'd want to be a little more cautious, and that would be Great White, uh, who, who, who basically at one of their shows, because of their pyrotechnics, a bunch of people died. Uh, and yet this past weekend, uh, they, were playing an, uh, they were playing a show – with no social distancing requirements, no no mask requirements, no anything. They just all wanted to to hear my 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 once once bitten twice shy. That was that was a big My thing. take was a it's in North North Dakota. I don't think like no one goes to North Dakota except oh, sure, there us. might have only been eight people there. I guess that's true. Sturge is right. Um, <laughs> but like of all the heavy metal bands that one plays. Like yeah, you you started a freaking fire in a nightclub and killed what like 13 people like that well that's you dude good thing i didn't buy uh judas priest that like outright canceled that got canceled well yeah i mean at least that at least you would have gotten your money back on that because it canceled instead of postponed yeah yeah well i got i got my money back for uh craft work because they canceled outright um but i told i think uh yeah kmfdm and ministry postponed till april yep um that's what's funny too we're getting like August 21 wedding invites and stuff. Now we're like, read the, my, my wife's like, we got to go to a wedding next month. And I go, 
Look at the thing. She's like 21. Good Look at Christ, the year. You know. Oh, well, yeah, dude, I mean, seriously, like, I mean, like, my niece, uh, well, shit, Caitlin, uh, you know, one of our engineers is getting ready to get married and is kind of tweaking about stuff. Um, my niece uh, is supposed to be getting married the second weekend of September. Pretty tweaking out about stuff. Well, think about, think about if you're a wedding season, if you're a, vac- if you're a venue, you're supposed to get married this year, you have to push it next year. So now you got double weddings next year, pending everything's open. Mm-hmm. And now, like, you've got to book that shit, like, now. Otherwise, like, there's no way to, for catering, all the stuff to line up, the bands. Well, and hey, th- that's assuming the venue is still going to be open next year, that your caterer is still going to be in business next year. That... Right. Yeah. So my... uh. I, I hate seeing videos like this, but like the place that, so like when we were kids and we just started driving, um, Hall Road wasn't Hall Road yet. It was just like a two lane thing. And to get to CJ Barrymore's was kind of like Archie's Atomic and License to Drive. It was like, it took like 45 <laughs> minutes to get there. And you didn't, there was no MapQuest or GPS. You just kind of had to go. We never saw these roads before because our parents never drove that far out. Right. Would come to this glorious place where like, it was like a nightclub and a huge arcade and pool tables and pot pot and it was just like a kid's dream, right? Well, apparently there's like this brawl happened there. It's been still there. It's doing well. They actually have like a roller coaster there now. It's yep. like it's totally blown up and expanded. But now like they have rules now, um, like these obscene. Um, I'm trying to look for it now. Like no, they've had parents- to. I mean, basically they said that basically uh, parents, you are no longer allowed to drop off your kids and just leave them there. Yeah. Um, I think it's a maximum of, uh, what is it, two kids? Like there, it has to be two kids per one adult. Well, did you hear how the fight started? Yeah, because they started kicking people out and everybody got crappy in the parking lot and shit went down. No. One girl Instagrammed another girl's boyfriend, and she initiated a fight. Yeah, that's what that's what they're telling people. You know the news, um, and then it just went nuts. But yeah, like well, that's what I mean. So the scuffle started inside, and they tried to do the right thing and kicked everybody out. But then in the parking lot, it went just batshit crazy. But that's what I, I mean. Like I'm the not state saying cops that the generations showed up. are the same, but like, like not local, but the state cops showed up. Oh, and they were thirteen. They were Magdalena's age. I'm like, oh my god. Yep. Well, like um. Our parents, that's all they used to do on the weekends. Drop us off at Lakeside Mall. Drop us off at Barrymore's. Yep. Drop us off at Butterfly. Drop us off at the bowling alley. We'll be, we'll be done at six. These kids today, yeah. Bob. It's, ah, uh, <laughs> we didn't have the Instagrams and the Facebooks. We didn't, uh, well, and that's, dude, that's part of it. And we've talked about this before. I mean, part of the, you know, the, the headaches and chaos that kids today are dealing with is that 24-7 you know, just basically feedback cycle. And that's, you know, like, my, dude, I'm, I, I've gotten into it with my kids because I've told them basically at 11 PM, your phones are, cause their bedrooms are upstairs. I've said, you know, your phones are downstairs by where I am on the couch. Um, and they are plugged in and charging there. You do not need your phones in your rooms at night. There is nothing going on after 11 o'clock that you need to be a part of. Good luck when Sam's 16 and try that one. (laughs) I I mean, she's going to be 13 in a, in a few weeks. Right. Um, and, and she's pushing back hard and I'm like, Hey, I, you cannot have a phone like that. That's an option. Like, (laughs) you know, and, and I do, I mean, I get it. Like, you know, part of the whole parenting thing is, okay, here's the boundaries. And, and then it's my job to let them know which ones they can push up against <laughs> and which ones they can't. Well, I got the one the other night was, uh, can I stay out till one o'clock? And I go, where are you going to be? A friends. What you got to tell me who, what you gotta tell me, yeah. me who. And she's like, well, this guy, this, this one, I go, who? <laughs> where? And she's like, it's only another hour. Dad. I go, you could not go. Like, I'm just like, I don't care if you go. Like, you know, she didn't go. Yeah, it, it makes no difference to me whether you go or not. Like, I, you, I could, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what's going to make me happy? So, Aunt, riddle me this. If Portillo's comes to Detroit, which it says they are in, in the- uh, I feel like we've almost, talked about this story before. No, but but am, this is legit now. It's apparently it's done deal. Okay. Um, am, am I going to not, like Italian beef to me is like, I can't go to Chicago without getting a hot, wet Italian beef in my mouth. Right. I just use that for an isolation drop. Um, but exactly. <laughs> if it's if it's 15 minutes from my front door, is it not going to be the same? Am I going to still going to eat it? I, like, you know, I mean, you'll probably still get one while you're there, but it won't have the same effect. I mean, because it's yeah, if it's something you can get whenever, what's the point? 
It's like yingling beers. Do I like it because I can't get it? Yeah. Or because it's delicious. Or because you can make the killing all the yinglings jokes. I mean, that, <laughs> that's, that's the only reason why you like it now. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Never get old. That was credit mark on that one. It was. Uh, um, what is, oh, so can we ban, speaking of kids, can we ban TikTok already? Like, can that just happen? I killed it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm so over the TikTok thing and i hate sounding like an 80 year old when i say that you didn't do that do, 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 dance you didn't do that one no i did not do that <laughs> was was there something they were trying to rope parents into yeah no there was like yeah Honestly, like, they, they knew better than to ask me <laughs> I, I let i let annie watch them as long as they're on youtube kids like otherwise you know what i mean it's yeah you're you know you're you know um but like what is uh who wait did um who said to, that they had was it Microsoft Amazon Amazon, Amazon. banned TikTok uh, any employee from having TikTok on their phones. God, see though I, what more? See, here's what I want to ask: What more permissions are we giving TikTok than anything else? That oh, dude, if you read through it, it's pretty insane, and and the like more than Google, the Googles yep. and the Facebooks, and that's that's part of the issue is now there there are some questions floating um, about whether or not the app is remaining active even when it's closed, um, and potentially still recording and still doing stuff like that, um, and that's part of the issue is that it it actually has access to things that it has no no real need to be having access Ooh. to it was recently caught accessing user clipboard data when running in the background exactly you know, what else what do you put on your clipboard stored passwords from your password manager yep <sighs> yeah eat my ass i deleted it already so yeah yeah not a fan but so i mean so speaking of that though there was the uh the story about how basically thieves are using Google Analytics as a backdoor into credit card theft. I did not read that one. I was like, am I just talking to myself? Did I freeze up? Did y'all freeze up? (laughs) No, I'm looking for the article. I can't, uh, I didn't read it. Honestly, I I felt like the only reason that you shot this link across was because it included the phrase deep in the back end. I I figured that was the, the only reason you actually shot that link across. Oh, you know what? I read. I was one of those where I read the title, thought it'd be good, sent it over, didn't read it. Oh. Go figure. No, I mean it's it's not bad. I mean, essentially, it's 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 basically the people are cyber criminals are using the um, trusted status of Google Analytics uh, as a way of hijacking their way into e-commerce sites um, and then being able to get into their systems and databases and all that kind of stuff. So just you know, obviously, it's being worked on. There are patches and yada yada. But do it's... people still use Google Analytics? Oh yeah, have oh, they God. gotten better? Yeah. No, they have. I think it's time to break up Google, though. They do too much. Whatever, Ronald Reagan. Um, And then things going by the wayside. Apparently, Kroger isn't even going to bother with coins anymore. So the... I know that, again, back to the conspiracy theory. Here we go. It just, it makes makes, makes me twitch when I hear stuff like that. You know cashless society i can hear everybody screaming now um but if you like if your bill's forty dollars and ten cents like they'll round up to nine forty one dollars then you get it in kroger bucks another 90 cents on your on your on your whatever card what, what if i don't have a rewards card uh, then you donates to a charity i think That's okay right. cool are they rounding everything up yeah, are they, they, there's no coins up, dude right but are they rounding you know, I think I would think forty half up, half down. Cents, they might drop down to forty bucks. No, it's all up. It's all up. Oh, yeah. Um, but like you know, it's but I mean, if you're using your debit card, you don't worry about it anyway. Right. Like you're yeah. Well, cash. and I and I do. I mean, I understand it, and, and I, I mean, I I get the conspiracy theories that are coming out about it. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, like even the FDIC came out and said, "Look, there are problems, dude. If there are problems with the supply chain getting toilet paper to stores." there's problems getting, you know, I mean, dude, I've seen store, I've seen like, you know, 7-Elevens and that kind of stuff with signs up that say, hey, we need change, you know, bring us rolled coin and we'll give you the, we'll give you the cash amount for it. Plus you get it like a free Slurpee or, you know, a free whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's a genuine a, issue. The roundup is to the food bank or to your Kroger credit. Your Kroger oh, okay. Card. Um, well, I mean, I guess like, it's, you know, like Grubhub and everybody else has that, you know. Oh, and speaking of Grubhub and everything else, DoorDash can kiss 
every bit of my ass. Um, inside too. Inside Gross. too. Because, I, dude, I went to go order sushi the other day, um, and what's normally like a forty dollar order with all their stuff suddenly was like a sixty five dollar order. Um, because they had slapped on all these new service fees and charges and, and you click the little information button on what they are. And it's, well, this is to help us keep DoorDash up and running. Well, that's not my problem. Bye-bye. I was talking to, um, a good friend of mine that I grew up with that moved down to Florida and she runs like a restaurant chain. Um, she's like the GM and she was talking about how, what yeah, you, so, you talked about her about the beer stuff once upon a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think DoorDash takes from, like, let's say you buy $20 worth of food. Like, your order is $20. What does DoorDash take as a cut? Uh, I'm going go to be 30 wrong. to 40%, six to eight bucks. 30, yeah, 36%. I thought it was like 15 to 18%. The fact that it's 36%. And she goes, right now, he goes, we have, we got six locations. We're just going to, and we have the apps, the, our POS can talk to the apps. Like, you know what I mean? Cause I go, we need. Oh yeah. They, they can, can turn it off. Right, right. No, no, no. But they can, they're, so they're toying around with just doing their own delivery and hiring like three people because the, the money it's that they cheaper lose. Cheaper than going through DoorDash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She goes, I can't even, we can't even put an order out. We got to mark it up so much just to just to break even on those things and our people don't get tipped because the drivers get tipped because if you think about that now right like that 10 percent that the the, the to-go people would get gone it's like i kind of like i don't feel bad about using doordash but i kind of do like you think about now well, like i'm over doordash last time i ordered there was a problem with my order the time before that there was a problem with my order i contacted support they said we'll help you this time but if you have any more problems with future orders we're not helping you anymore yeah bye yeah well, I got me some Tim Hortons. Well, for me, it's I can't move, so it's different. You know, what I mean? you're yeah, like yeah, um, you're like locked into your house. That's a bit of an issue. <laughs> so I mean, any, I got, did your friend say are any of the other services better, like Grubhub or Postmates or anything like that? They use um, they don't have Grubhub down there okay. or where she's at. So it's uh, it's um, one of the other ones, it, Postmates or yeah, and then she's like they're all trash. She's just because of the percentage they take, they can't even. So yeah, it's going to be odd now to see which restaurants are going to uh, um, do their own delivery. Because why wouldn't you if you have six, eight, five locations? Uh, discoverability, like you don't show up in the app anymore, so people don't consider you. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I know. You're no, you're right. You'll get loyals, but that's about it. Yeah, no, totally right. So the necessary evils. Yeah, curse you. It's a thing, I guess uh and honestly uh the only thing i think we got is hey how much did your phone blow up today how many emergency <laughs> alerts did i get and yeah. uh and uh um and an amber alert i um i got just one emergency one amber alert like right yeah, after yeah. yeah those are loud i feel like they need to use different sounds to distinguish them or something yeah my uh my volume's off so I yeah, there's nothing. Oh, I I learned I learned after today. Uh, like and I learned how to turn the volume off. <laughs> Figured that so out real just, quick. All you have to do is turn off the volume. Like it, the volume doesn't go on if you have your like everything was off on my phone. It just buzzed. Oh. I, I yeah I I thought it accelerated it and did its thing. Uh, I feel nope. bad for the people that have their volume on that are like wake got waking up at like five in the morning on Amber Alerts for like to come see <laughs> like, for, yeah damn. 50 60 miles away yeah <laughs> eh. uh yeah and that's uh that's that's all i got you got anything awesome. else no good to go should be a good week so all right we had a we had an hour of doom and gloom and then uh, an hour of not so doom and gloom so let's go. <laughs> so, hey we're gonna wrap up episode 356 on behalf of uh, bob dave and randy do us all a favor drink up your drinks get your phone numbers you don't gotta go home you just gotta get the hell out of here see you next week drive careful beat it see ya I should rechange it. <laughs>